the delay. Sorry, I just need to pull up one uh, one folder. Just give me one second. Sorry, I, I was uh, I'm late here to the party. Go under that way, people can see. Actually, they can see even if you go under. Thirty more seconds. Uh, that's a very sensitive mic there, Marion. I know. I was just saying, like, we're not muted. I, we can't snark about anything taking else. a nap under the table or anything like that. <laughs> it's being Never recorded for mic. posterity. Yeah. No side conversations. <laughs> Are you going to get in front of me? Okay. I think this is going to be okay, and we're ready to start. Hold on one more second. I'm share the screen. There you go. No, you just had. There it is. Yeah. Where you go? There you go. All right. Um, I think we're okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna make this. Yeah, okay. All right, um, let me call to order the regular monthly meeting of the EDC of March 2nd, starting a few minutes late. Um, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Um, I have one, which is a uh, an events request, grant request for TEDx for a special program for 2023, um, which would be under new business. Um, so we'll cover that, unfortunately, Deb last, but that's where we add new things. Um, are there any other additions or deletions to the agenda? Sorry, the, just to, so the agenda is, if there are any other updates from the working groups or initiatives, the first piece of old business is a, is a funding proposal from a new child care provider, uh, the Mill School. And then we will talk about a revised funding proposal from the marketing working group talk about why that's coming up tonight. Um, uh, the work plan to assess the community and visitor uh, perspective surveys and so forth that we talked about undertaking. And uh, and then we would uh, briefly the EDC vacancy and then we would talk about the TEDx, uh, the grant request. Are there any other items to be added to the agenda? No, okay, seeing none. Uh, we'll start then with, are there any working group updates other than what we're going to cover on the agenda? Uh -oh. Okay, good. All right, Carolyn, um, I think your son may have woken up at just the wrong time. Possibly. So Carolyn Olson here, um, actually, yeah, no, if you are going to sit there, that's fine. Just take this little mic. Okay. John, are you going to weave citizen comments into oh, the? No, no, no. Sorry. No, no. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. I am not going to do that. I skipped over it completely. Sorry. Um, are there um, are there citizen are there any citizen comments? And let let me just say that I um, well sorry. Let me just say, are there any citizen comments? Normal. Uh, just from a media perspective, because I need to duck out at seven o'clock for another meeting. And this is not editorializing at all. It's just what I hope to hear this evening. Um, I'm hoping that there will be some interplay between the consideration of the marketing um, uh, revised proposal and what Caroline is about to propose um, in terms of how much money is left in the potential pool for major grants for this year, because that's one of the things I want to explore in this article. And I just, again, just put that out there. I'm assuming that's going to happen based on previous meetings, but I just want to say that that's kind of my agenda for for being here. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I, yeah, I think that information will come out, and I can certainly share it with you if it doesn't. But I think it will. Are there yeah. any other other, other citizen comments? Uh, let me just pull up the participants. But again, it's a little tough to sometimes monitor that. So if um, if I see anything, I'll yeah. Are there any other citizen comments at this point? Again, time permitting, I think it will. We'll obviously take them during the course of this of the other issues. All right, seeing none. Um, approval of the minutes. We do have minutes on there on the website from February. Uh, they're not on the website. Okay, 
uh, we're going to approve the February 9th minutes at the next meeting um, when we do the, the 15th minutes because we don't have those prepared yet. And I realize I did not post them on the website. Sorry about that. Um, so now we're down to old business and future funding proposal. We heard last meeting from Caroline a kind of a quick update on the mill school um, funding request. And uh, and now Caroline is back with more information and I think actually making the request tonight. So yeah. do you want me to put up the PowerPoint? Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, I'm gonna attempt to do that. Okay, and why don't you just tell me when you want me. Okay, to... can everybody hear me from this far away? Yep. Good. Okay, awesome. So um, we are proposing the mill school um, a new child care center in Woodstock. So we initially thought we would have 22 kids in there, but we had the fire marshal come over and he said we can actually fit 22 people total, either 22 or 23, which means we'll fit either 17 or 18 children. Uh, we've already, you can go to the next slide. Uh, next slide. So we are a nonprofit and our mission is to pay our staff more to make the center affordable for all and to make everyone feel welcome in our community. So something that's a little different about us is we plan to have our starting pay at $20 an hour because we think that's the minimum that staff deserves in that field. And our rates will be a little bit higher. So I keep playing with the numbers, trying to get as low as possible on that. Right now, if we have 17 kids, we'll be able to charge 84. And if we have 18, or, $84 a day. A day. Yep. And a then kid. if we have, yep. And if we have, if we have 18 kids, we'll be able to charge 79. So I keep playing with that number. Built into that number, there's a $12,000 pot, I think, for financial aid. So what we're planning to do is we're planning to help those who can't afford that discrepancy by dipping into our financial aid pot, which will be basically our profit from the year plus any donations that we get throughout the year. Um, next slide. So our total project cost is about $220,000. So far, we've invested $45,000 in a cash deposit on the unit that we purchased. It's over at the mill building. Um, we've gotten a loan of $65,000. And total funding that's already been allocated is $110,000. We also won $15,000 at the Startup Woodstock um, competition. So we'll be using that towards toys and furnishings and everything that we need for the inside. And we're coming to the EDC for basically the build out. So it's an empty space right now. It was an old artist gallery. So we need to put in walls, put in a little kitchenette, put in bathrooms. Where, where is this? So we're over at the mill building. It's uh, near Sunset Valley Farm, but a little further down. Central Valley Farm. Sunset Valley. Oh, Sunset Valley Farm. Yeah, so it's down on Max and Meadow Way in Dr. Knott's yep. building, if you're familiar with that building. Yep. Um, so we already have two commercial units over there for our business. And we just purchased two more, one for our business and one for this new child care center. Um, okay, I think that's it. Sorry. So the 90,000 will go towards the build out. Uh, timeline, we've already closed on the property. We had a contractor walk through and give us um, the quote and come through with the fire marshal. Our planning and zoning review meeting is on uh, Wednesday, March 8th. So assuming all goes well with that, we'll start construction immediately after. And we're hoping, they told us it would take about a month and we already have the contractor lined up. So he's ready to go as soon as we get the zoning approval. Um, <clears throat> so we're hoping it'll take about a month and our target open date is May 30th or June 1st. And we already have our director um, hired because she's our current caregiver. And we have an interview with somebody on March 17th. And I already have two other people that have reached out interested in coming to work for us. But we haven't quite finished the staffing process or started it really until we were in the actual construction phase. Okay. Keep going. How are you doing staffing wise? How are we doing staffing wise? Yeah. So we haven't started the full promotion of staffing, but we have our director all act as the business manager. And then we have an interview with somebody March 17th. And then we have two other people that have reached out interested, but we haven't pursued that yet. You want to fill? So we need four full-time teaching staff, and then we need the business. How does that look? Um, so we have, it's up in the air, but we have three people interested, three or four. So 
we'll see how it pans out, but um, Thank you. we'll start actively doing it as soon as we get that permit in hand. Uh, for financial sustainability, I have a business background, so uh, it's super important for me to make sure that we're not going in the red every year. I want to make sure it's sustainable and we don't want to have to keep coming back and asking for money every year. We just want it to be successful from day one. So that's why we're charging a little bit more because we want to pay that staff a little bit more. Um, and we're hoping that we've put in a little bit too much of a cushion in some of the expenses so that we can actually start to charge less, but we'd rather charge more and bring it down than do it the other way around. Hey, how you, um, how are your prices compared to your competition? So um, some of the other- I, I'm sorry to use Yeah, the word. no, it's okay. So, yeah, so it's um, like $10, $15 cheaper a day. Who is? Most of the ones Most here, the they charge work. 60 to 65. 15 bucks an hour, hour a day? A day, yeah. So it really only comes out to a dollar something more per hour yeah. for us. So dollar wise, it's not. Yeah, exactly. When you, when you break it down a little bit more, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't seem as, as much. <laughs> it's way less than all over the country. So my brother, for example, is in D.C. They charge $150 a day. Wow. Yeah. So it's. It's crazy, but that's why we have that financial aid pod. And then another cool thing is the state just raised the income limits. So a family of five, for example, just a week ago, wouldn't qualify for financial aid if they made $150,000 a year, but now they can. So that's the limit is $150,000 a year. You'll get something towards childcare. From the state. From the state. So we're going to base our financial assistance on the state assistance. So if somebody comes to us and says, hey, I qualify for this, then we'll cover that gap. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, next slide. I keep thinking you're reading my mind, John. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll try. I was like, no, that's okay. Um, so this is our estimated PL annually. So you'll see we have a financial aid program pot of 14,000. All good. Um, so this model is based on paying six staff, um, utilities. So our plan on paying more is we want, we want employee retention. So we want to treat our staff well by paying them well, by listening to them, listening to their input. Parent retention is important and that follows with employee retention because parents want to know they're sending their kids to the same staff members. They don't want people changing constantly. It's really important to know and trust those caregivers that our children are with. Um, yeah, I think I touched on everything. So. Can I just make hey, a suggestion? Yeah. I have a question. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you have rent here, but at the same time, you said you purchased. Uh, can you explain that? What is the rent really your mortgage? What What's the? Yeah. So the rent the rent will help pay will help pay the mortgage. That that's another number we're flexible on because it's coming to us. So essentially, we'll use that money towards the financial aid program as well. So it'll okay. be it's fle a flexible number. Okay, but uh, but I uh, explain. Rent to me says you're renting something from somebody, whereas a mortgage says I'm paying a bank. Uh, I'm not quite clear. Is this rent or or you said you so purchased? This, the, the purchase was made in a different LLC. So there, there'll be rent paid from the ah. child care to the LLC. But again, that's a flexible number that was just put gotcha. in to push gotcha. in so that we can play. With. That's a number I've been playing with, actually. All right, so you got two businesses connected. Yep, got it. Yeah. That, that actually is a good point that... that um, so Larry and I have been working with Caroline the same way we worked with the other providers to kind of vet this prior to it coming here. And that's actually one question that we didn't, it's a very good question, Patrick. So can I just ask yeah. if, if, I mean, if the cost of it was 110,000, mm -hmm. then the rent is pretty, I mean, that's a pretty good deal for the other business. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, we're like playing with it constantly. So okay. that's basically tying into financial aid. So okay. we can drop that, put more into financial financial aid it's going to go back into the business okay essentially back into the child care yeah. business okay all right i understand yeah I, the, while we're talking about finances can i suggest that we just quickly put up the spreadsheet that all yeah. the other yeah um, i'm going to share that sheet um, i'm going to try to share that sheet um and this may be a little bit hard to see hold on um let me just try to um i'm going to scroll over hold on how do you does anyone know how to get the 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 Bottom right, zoom in, bottom right. No, 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 no. Before that, the, the black bar at the bottom that zoom imposes on a part of the screen. How do you, how do you, oh, I see, never mind. No, 
How, how do you move, move that? Two fingers. Oh, now I got it. I got it. There it goes. Can okay. Make it bigger um, though? I still can't read it. Yeah, I know. I'm getting there. I, first, the problem is, hold on. There's this Zoom put so much crap. I'm on like screen. Benjamin Button. I'm older than you. I'm just going backwards. <laughs> yeah, hold on. <laughs> uh, hold on one second. We got to freeze this. Sorry. Give me one second. I should delete it, all of us. Yeah, we, it's not your fault. Yeah. You can hide them, right? All right, there we go. Okay, so um, our goal for June, I think we'll be able to exceed this, but our goal for June is to have at least nine children enrolled. Um, so that would be five kids over the age of two, and then four kids under the age of two, approximately. Um, we already have two of those staff is me and um, the director. So we need one more teaching staff to make that happen because our director will act as a float at first. Um, then July, we're hoping to at least hire one more staff and then we'll be able to bring in four, five more kids. Um, four, four, four more kids. kids. Yep, four more kids. So this is modeled off of 17 kids. Um, and then by August, we hope to be at full yeah. capacity. So hire all of our staff and have all of our children support. And at full capacity, your estimate is that's when you reach to break even. So you have a small yep. loss in the first few months and then small loss in the first few months. Break in, break yep. in. Okay, I just wanted to to this is the same sheet that that um the other providers filled out. So okay. Okay, um, next slide. So this is about our, our students. So of the 28 people on our wait list, so our wait list right now is at 37. Um, and of the 28 that responded on where they live or work, 79% of those are, uh, are in Woodstock. Um, and that's, yeah. that's kind of it from that slide. Uh, we, I, we've touched upon this, but respect and high pay are two of our biggest um touch points for our facility we want to make sure our staff feels respected and they're paid well so that they stay with us for the long term so our risk permitting so that one's coming up so 38 if for some reason we don't get our approval then can't really move forward with the project so that's a risk for staff we know that other people in the area are having trouble hiring so we're planning on mitigating that by by paying $20 an hour starting, which I think will help draw people in. Um, students, so our rates are going to be a little bit higher. So we're still trying to make that rate lower and more comparable to other spots in the area. But um, we think that people can afford it and will pay it, especially if we're offering that financial aid too, because we want to make it affordable for everybody. So our goal is to do that with that financial aid pot. Uh, demand. So I know a lot of money just went out for other childcare facilities, but we already have 37 names on our list and that's already taking off some people that have told me, hey, I can't pay that or hey, I'm already somewhere else. So I don't need need to be on the list anymore. So even if um, all of those people are taken care of through the other childcare centers, I think we still can fill that capacity because there's always people moving. There are always people having babies, especially because we've had a huge influx in young families here. And then we're also super flexible. So something that I mentioned to John is that we could potentially do childcare combined with aftercare. So let's say for whatever reason, we can't get 17 kids that are under three, then we can open it up to kids because my kid is in pre-K and we don't have aftercare for him right now. So we could do 10 children aftercare, convert that to a summer program in the summer because there's nothing for four-year-olds. For example, the closest thing is farm and wilderness camp, um, full day. So that's what we're doing for our son this year. So we would transition it into a summer camp over the summer. So we're flexible and nimble and we can, we can shift based on the needs of the community. And that, that's it. Yeah, does anybody have any questions? Questions? I have one for you, John, which is, yeah. have you done that uh, cross-checking of lists yet or is that in the future? Yeah, so so that that is not, not, not been done. 
and not in the future. Okay. We, we, the reason is that, um, and we've learned our lesson, that we have to follow the law. And it turns out that the child care providers are not, their interpretation, which I think is correct, yeah. is that they're not allowed to provide us oh. with the name of the list unless the parents um, agree to it. Right, right. And so we're, we're going to, I think, I'm going to let, uh, Larry and I have interchanged and worked with Carolyn and with Todd and the other, Todd hasn't worked with Caroline, but Todd worked with all the others. Larry and I worked with some of the others and some worked with Caroline. So I, Larry, do you want to comment briefly on the, on the kind of, on the, on our view of this proposal, basically, and, and it discusses the question of capacity, because that's really what the list goes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I think, first of all, we've looked at this uh, in the same way that we looked at the other providers um, and uh, did the same kind of analysis. And I think w John and I, we both, both feel like this is a very credible proposal. Um, it's, it's in line with the proposals that we received. And um, uh, as long as they uh, uh, do get their licenses, do have an executive director, um, it falls in line with the other uh, providers that we we have funded. Um, what we uh, have not done and what you just touched on is we've, we, we have not established the demand. Um, even though I, you know, uh, Carolyn has had great success in getting people to, to um, uh, sign up. Um, John and I at least feel like we would like to have a little more or a lot more indication of what the actual demand is out there and that we would like to do have a survey, um, try to try to do something that's a little more sophisticated. It's sort of like um, it's it's slightly a different situation uh, that, that Caroline's in because we've just funded so much. Uh, it's like if housing had, let's say we let's say we um, uh, funded a hundred new housing units, and somebody came in and said we want to do uh, twenty five more. We would say, well, now we need to know whether those hundred hundred housing units um, are actually going to get filled, and I, that's the same thing. It's the same position we're in now. So we like the proposal. We think that it's a very good, credible proposal. Uh, they've done a really good job. Um, it's, it sounds like uh, uh, they should be very successful. The only thing is that we feel like we would like to have a better handle um, now that we've already funded so much um, to, uh, to uh, uh, child care to, to make sure that uh, the demand is out there. The um, I guess the the other thing that's more for the full EDC to decide is if all these uh, if if the demand is there and the numbers and we feel the numbers are are good are are correct. Um, do we still want, do does the EDC want to be funding more childcare? Um, and that that's more of a discussion discussion for the full DDC. It's certainly not something that uh, John and I have come up with or, or are going to make a re recommendation on one way or the other, but it certainly um, requires a, a discussion, I would assume. Yeah, so. I, I think I, I would just say that the, I think the choice, given what Larry said, I think the choices that we have tonight are at one extreme, and I, I'm laying out these extremes because it's a continuum, like many of our decisions, but I think at one extreme, we could say, we don't need verification of the demand. Um, and this argument has been made before. People will be moving in. I mean, Carolyn made it, but so is Todd. People will be moving in. Um, you know, there's, the, the, it won't be the end of the world if they're slightly, if, you know, we're, we're not going to get this exactly to the 0. 0.75 child, you know, you know, we're not going to exactly equate supply and demand. Childcare, we know, is a huge priority. Um, let's approve it. It's a credible proposal. That that part isn't, and 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 the risks that Larry and I saw around not getting a license and not getting an executive director, we've discussed those with Caroline. She's got a plan to prepare to proceed on that basis. Mm. Um, so really, well, the, the only question then is is 
the only question for Larry, that Larry and I had was the question of demand. So at one extreme, we could do we could say let's approve it because of that. Let me just lay out the three sure, options. Uh, a second option at the other extreme is to say either because you don't like the proposal, we would suggest that's not a great reason, or because you don't you think that other priorities like marketing or housing are more important. That even even if you had everything on the license, we don't want to expand. We don't. We've spent enough on childcare. You could say that. I think what, or you could say something in the middle, which is, we like this proposal. We know we're never going to be able to pin down exactly what demand is, and we can't do what we wanted to do with respect to the lists. But let's at least do a survey. Let's do it as quickly as we can, and let's ask people to say, look, please tell us if you're on multiple lists and so forth. You know, we're trying to assess that. And and the interesting thing about this proposal, as Carolyn said, is that they could, they unlike the others, can meet demand in in either of the segments. And so we could be looking for for need in, in continued need in either of those segments. I think those are broadly speaking the three kinds of options we have tonight, unless people come up with others. So Joe and then and then Todd. Well I'm just curious and, and I think Todd can probably answer this better than anybody. You know, he's so involved with uh the other daycare um issues that, that we, we voted on. I, I I'm I'm wondering uh, based on all the work that was done with regards to the previous group of daycare um, proposals that we had to address, was there any sense then that uh, there wouldn't be a demand problem with this one based on how much of a demand there was on the ones we already have approved? I'll, Todd? I'll let Todd answer that. Yeah, I think, uh, Carolyn, a great proposal. I expect only greatness, and I'm glad to see it. Um, Joe, here's the thing. It, it First of all, I'm just going to put out there, I'm disheartened to hear about West dropping 40% of their pre-K classes with no advance warning to folks in our district. Um, so that just set me down a sort of negative negative path, and I'm I'm at the limit. You know, what are we going to do? People are struggling. They're going to continue to struggle. You think you got to win and then someone screws you over and you have no say in the matter, yet your tax dollars go to them and we can't find anyone to work in our restaurants or mower lawns or work in any of those jobs or other jobs for that matter. So to answer your question, Joe, people are struggling. You know it and I know it. And everyone knows it. They can all move tomorrow. It's a free country. They can leave. And there's no child care needed in Woodstock. Only old people live here with no kids or young people with no, no kids. Every kid leaves. Hunger Games of children, they're all gone. It can happen. But what I think is the most important thing to touch on the point of this is that I'm fully in 100% behind all the housing, all the child care, all the marketing. I think the surveys that we take in this small town don't really work. They don't paint the right picture. You're not going to get the data you really need because there's not a large enough sample. I think that we need to just consider if this for 90,000 and change, let's call this one, it's the payment schedule and the moments that you hit that go and trigger funds release. I think that if we spend our time thinking about that, metrics to be hit for funds to go out that might be a way we can potentially examine how these work so for example if carolyn needs ninety thousand, and we say we're going to give you 30 until you have seven children in and you have to finance the other 60 but once you get seven we'll give you 20 whatever the version is and we've done this with some of the other ones in the earlier grant process which they did have a leg up because they were earlier and we were sort of more open-minded with the unknown right but I think that the way we trigger payments is the way to solve this issue. And I, I hope we can really think about that because you can't lose the people's money if they don't hit the trigger point. And if they hit the trigger point, then we're successful. If they don't, then we only lost the delta between the last time we funded them for that bit and, and what didn't happen after that. So for me, I think the demand is incredibly high. Again, I'm incredibly disheartened with 
our elected and representative officials of the school board for a variety of reasons, but lowering three to six year old at 40% in Woodstock, which we are Woodstock. Okay. We, this is what we're here. We're here to protect and help grow the economy of Woodstock. We're going to have a lot of problems. And Carolyn is a, a solution driven person. And I, I really think that if we can find a way to, to do this payment schedule that we can avoid the malarkey of surveys because the surveys we took, we got a hundred respondents, but you couldn't quite understand. We didn't ask the question and Larry pointed this out to me many times and I refused to do another one. I should have. <laughs> he, we couldn't quite understand who was on multiple lists and we could have asked the question. We didn't know enough then to have to ask then. We certainly didn't know till recently. We can't get the list from the providers without a bunch of, of tape. So long story short, I believe the demand is strong. I believe we need to have a checks and balance on release of funds to alleviate if there's any drop in that demand. That's all great, Todd, but that really doesn't answer the question. What the, the, the question was pretty simple. Based on your experience with the prior applications for daycare and what you learned about that, that environment, do you think that there is a market out there for, based on what you've learned prior for this proposal? Is there a market out there for it? Yes. That's all. Very simple. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I, I, Patrick, <laughs> your all. hand was up first, but I'm going to, Tom has to go. Is it, I'm just going to let Tom Ayers ask and then Patrick. Yeah. Um, uh, just a quick question uh, related to the upcoming March 8th um, zoning and planning um, commission meeting that, that Caroline is going before. What, what's the nature of that application? Is it a conditional use permit, yeah. Caroline? Yep, it's conditional use. So just changing it from artist gallery to a place where we'll have children coming in. Okay, okay. So, so it should be, they told us it should be pretty straightforward. And if somebody comes yeah. and says, I don't like kids, I don't want it there, that's not going to get them to stop it. So it has right, to get right. a valid Yeah. Reason. So it sounds like a straightforward conditional use and yeah. change of use, really, and not um, anything potentially controversial or anything that would derail your plan. So yeah, um, it should be good. it should be good. good. Fingers good. crossed. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, I appreciate your uh, giving me the opportunity to speak, and I do I do need to exit, but I am recording, and I look forward to speaking with um, some of you over the course of the next couple of days about all of this. Um, it's it's all interwoven and interrelated and you know kudos to you for dealing with it so <laughs> all right thanks uh, patrick right. my question is is more have we looked at this from the point of what is the timing of all of the spaces availability for children uh it seems to me that caroline has a very straightforward timeline of and it seems very quick timeline as well uh what are how does that mesh with the timelines of the other proposals that we approved. Do we have any indication of that? Do we can? Yeah, I can. Know. I can speak to it if you because like. it, you know it seems to me like some of them are coming on slower, and it sounds seems like Caroline's is coming on faster. So I'm just you know just curious at what what the timing is on things. Yeah, if, if, um, so there's some infrastructure build projects like. Bridgewater community um, is a longer term um, additive value and WCCC is also an infrastructure bill, but they've already increased that capacity. And it's just about um, retrieving funds and, 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 and doing some outside work. Um, the other, the other two providers are slowly rolling up and have increased. Um, so there's a schedule that um, you know we're still pretty new into it, but there's a schedule they have of increase of uh, teacher versus children. And so, for example, like rainbows on schedule with seven seven people increase and and whatnot. So no one's um, no one's below the line, but we were looking at adding about the uh, seventy five to eighty slots within the year. Um, so mm -hmm. sort of we didn't anticipate like an instant influx, like Carolyn sort of has teed up. Right. Um, that that wasn't something we we had studied. So um, I can't say who's going to go where based on that. But really, the idea is if we have Carolyn's with Carolyn's put aside for a second, we should have about 75 new slots within mm -hmm. 
the one year period. And then Carolyn's facility would be additional to that if, if awarded. Okay, so it, and with that in mind, uh, the proposal that we've already done, uh, will that money be allocated this year? Uh, John can answer the allocation because he does the the check distribution, but it, it should it should be yeah. So at the so at the end of this year, all of the the three hundred fifty thousand we approved for the other one will have been dispersed. Is that a fair fair? If it's successful and hits the metrics for distribution, yes. Okay, all right. That that's what I need. Awesome. To yeah, I think by yeah, in twelve months. Yeah, from a financial point of view, here's the financial overview that that to see how this and anything else we consider tonight fits in. Um, in 2022, we, we run on a calendar year. Uh, so in 2022, our revenues were $370,000. That's $70,000 higher than pre-COVID, the, the highest year in pre-COVID. It's gone up every year. Um, we, we're up about 60, uh, 60% uh, from when the EDC started in 2015. Uh, we just received yesterday our first quarter 2023 number. Really? Which is first typical, quarter? The first quarter. We, 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 okay, we, 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 get, we get, we count our first quarter number as the money we get in the first quarter. Okay. So we get it in mid-February. Right. We get it in the middle of the quarter. And it was on the business that was done in the fourth quarter. Okay. But for us, we call it the first quarter. Okay. And that's why the first quarter is our biggest quarter. It's a third of the total because the fourth quarter, the holiday season right. is the biggest for the business. Right. Right. And that's the total. So the total was, uh, it was up 10% from 2022. And, so and the total uh, number? The total number was either 110 or 120. I can't remember which year it was. I think... I think we got 120 and last year was 110 or we got 110 and last year was 100. Uh, it's one of those two. I don't remember. We're, we're up nine. Sorry. We're up 9.2%. So, so one Carson, when, when you were saying the total for 2022, that's based on what was what we received in that year. Right, correct. Quarter thing, so, correct. Right. So it's what we received on February 15th, which was, so it's, it's for the business of the, of the fourth quarter well, in 2021 yeah. and the first three quarters of 2022. But okay. the way we think about it, the point is, is that, in the last 12 month period, we received 370,000. Yeah. Yeah. We're now 10% in the well, first of four payments, which is the biggest of the four by a little bit. We're 10% ahead. So barring a recession, a, is, and remember, and just so you know, to get you the magnitude of it, during COVID, the worst year we had, we went down to 220,000, which is a less of a decline, a huge decline. But less of a decline than I would have thought. I would have thought it would go to zero, basically, you know, close well, to zero. Yeah. So, so that gives you a sense as to what, as to what, the funds we have. I think it's reasonable. In my mind, I'm thinking three hundred and seventy thousand is so, reasonable so for John, this year. And, and against that, and against that three hundred and seventy thousand, we, we have we, we've paid we've we've paid for everything else including the child care out of our reserves. We have no unencumbered funds until yesterday where we got 110,000. So basically what we are funding in our marketing discussion, in our housing discussion, and in, our, in this child care discussion, in the TED discussion, and anything else we consider this year, um, because we've paid for the annual, the, the, the community grants from our reserves and we paid for the other child care in our reserves. So we're starting off fresh as of last meeting. Right, so I think my view is we'll get 350, 370,000. I think we'll do better than that, but I we might so not. Too. And against that, we've committed 106,000 this calendar year for housing, uh, 100,000 for marketing. <laughs> so, I mean, well, we haven't committed 100, but okay. let, but we've talked about. At one point, we were ready to commit to 100, and we've and if we were to commit to this. That would take us to 300,000, 301. That would still leave us. There's a request for 14,000 for TED. Uh, and so, but that would, that's where, we, so I think. So no community grant. 
No, no, no. We've already done a hundred thousand. Oh, we we've, we've, we've paid for the community oh, grants out of our state. savings. Okay. We've paid for community. We're, yeah. we're in a very strong financial position. We paid for everything. So okay. basically, the bottom line is we're, we're in the black. We're going to be in the black. Yeah. Bottom line is we have the money. Yeah. To to Todd's point, I think that the we have not really done a cash flow month by month cash flow. Right. And I think I'll just add one comment to the discussion. I think that the idea of 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 granting 30 a third of the 95,000 when you get to 6 a third when you get to 12 and a third when you get to 17 would help us to mitigate the risk of actually running out of funds in any month i think an ex that'd be an excellent way of handling it so, so we do. if when we get to a this question about whether or not to fund to not fund or to study yeah. survey yeah. i i would think that if that the funding motion would be if we decide to fund would be to fund that way Oh, Other, uh, Mike. Two questions, John. Two people have questions. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, Deborah and then Michael. Yeah, uh, great proposal. It looks beautiful. I have a question for you because it is a very quick uh, turnaround, and we've all experienced what it's like to build around here. Yeah. And, um, you know, the people that you're you're employing or you know do you have a plan b because it, you know getting it open by june feels you know yeah. hopeful. but i mean it may be more realistic to to go for september and you know do you have a plan for that yeah so you mean for do we have a like contractor that we well contingency for, plan for even if you have a yeah. contractor doesn't mean it, it can get it all yeah done, yeah you know, um by, yeah by we Very we're quick. We would be okay, like waiting, and we would be fine waiting. Um, we we can hire staff later. We don't have anybody like on staff yet, so it doesn't matter if we open June first or September first. We haven't committed to hiring anybody. The only person that's committed is our caregiver, who will be the director. So she's staying employed with us regardless. So it doesn't matter if she starts June first or September first. Okay, so she's on board either way. Okay. Yeah, she's on board. It's like it's her dream job. She's been in childcare since she was eighteen. She's thirty, almost thirty-one. So she's just okay. this is what she wants to do. Yeah. And Carolyn, you mentioned in your proposal oh, that sorry, you... Patrick. Hold on one second, Michael, and then Patrick. Yep. Sorry. It's okay. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I have a question. This is probably for Carolyn, because uh, you're talking about splitting payments, like we'll give you 30,000 when you have X enrolled, and then another 30 when you have Y enrolled. Does this this money is going towards build out? So does that work for you, yeah. Carolyn? Is that kind of structure even feasible? Because if you're not built out, then, you know, how can you have children? Yeah, so we talked, I talked about this with John. So we are, fingers crossed for this one too, our proposal should be presented, if any of you are familiar with Vermont Community Loan Fund. So we've worked with them in the, fa in the past VCLF. So they're about to present to their committee. It was supposed to be today actually, but it got pushed back because they had more questions for us. So I think it'll happen in two weeks, but um, they are going to do a bridge loan for us. Um, so we'll get 100. They're giving us a little extra in case contracting goes over what it's supposed to. So I think it's for 105. So we would just be able to pay back that loan with uh, the EDC funds. And then also that. Thank you. I was, sorry, I was going to say that the, um, our, our rent also has that cushion for the, uh, the build out. So you're asking about that can get lowered if we're not paying a loan back. To VCLF and we're getting the funds back. Does that make sense? Yeah. The rent payment goes sure down. Okay, uh, Patrick and then Joe. Hey, Carolyn, that was you. Uh, you mentioned something to that effect in your proposal. When I remember reading it, that you would be you would be okay if we if we approve these funds for 2024 versus 2023, based on yeah. getting that loan. Is that correct? Yes. So assuming we get that loan, then yeah, we're we're good to go on any kind of setup. I guess that works. As long as we know, hey, it's coming, then right. we feel comfortable doing it. Well, well, well just to be clear, the, the, the right, the, the, as long as we know it's coming. As long as we know. So it's what you're yeah. looking for is a decision. You didn't say it was. I'm putting words in your mouth. Yeah. I don't think you said it's okay if we decide whether to give you money in 20. We decide in 2024 <laughs> whether to give you money. Yeah. You'd like us to. You're asking for us to decide in 2023 whether yeah. to give you money. Yeah. You would accept it in 2024. Exactly. Yes. Which I think gives us even if more we time. wanted to even more 
ability to to yeah, manage like cash flow if we had to. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think the one <laughs> personally, the one third, one third, one third is going to be a sufficient. It is going to be sufficient, but, yeah, but Caroline, that just to be clear, that's that's with assuming you get the loan. So, yeah, for twenty twenty four. Yeah, if we don't get the loan, we two weeks they say you have the loan. Yeah, right. You then you would then you would be comfortable getting funds in twenty twenty four. Yep. Okay. Exactly. I just want to be clear on that. Other comments or questions. Larry, do you have a point? You and I have talked about this a lot in terms of, you know, Todd made his point about the efficacy of of surveys here in Woodstock and focused risk protection instead on on doling out the funds, you know, as as children are enrolled. Does that address? What does that address the supply demand? That to me, to some extent, some unknown extent, that addresses the supply demand. It goes towards addressing that. Actually, sorry, I'm sorry. Think about that for a minute. Sorry, I want to ask. I apologize, but I want to ask Todd a question. Todd, you talked about the decision that Wes made. Was that decision made after we made all of the other child care grants? Yes. That's just a couple of days ago, right? Yes. Yeah. It just it just came out of the blue, like a, right. two sons coming up tomorrow morning, man. And that's a that's a forty percent reduction yeah. in capacity, yeah. right? It's and, yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah, so that actually, what age range is that? Todd? Pre K is three and up. Three and so up. Could yeah, you serve, could you serve that? We, we could, yeah. Um, so I actually emailed Maggie about setting up a bus route for after school, seeing if that would be a possibility. And she's like, yeah, we could potentially work something out. And also, we actually might not. Have, she didn't say, this was actually yesterday, I think. She said, we might not be enrolling about 11 kids, so they might be looking for school year-round next year. So we could potentially do a pre-K. I don't know as much about the pre-K. We need to, I, I know a lot about the regulations for three and under, and they're slightly different for some reason for three and up. So I gazed, I glazed over yeah. them um, I, the other day, but. I yeah. think, I think the, I think the West thing needs to be dealt with on a broader town level. Um, it is, there are a lot different requirements for the two yeah. age groups, which I'm sure Carolyn is more than capable of dealing with. But I mean, really what the town I think is going to need to focus on is what do we want to be investing in in the schools and structures we've already paid for, um, not expanding that somewhere else. So really what I see as someone that's served on here and on the school board, my opinion is that when they see someone like Carolyn, they, they're like, great, we can lower the budget and let someone else deal with it. That's, that's a sad way to look at it, but it, it feels fairly accurate. So I think that the issue we have is that with Carolyn's success and the success of many of the early childhood six week to three, which we've spent this money and treasure on to let people move here and feel comfortable, they're all going to have a nervous breakdown when in two years they've got no place to send their kid unless they want to drive them to she or him or whoever to Killington or, 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 or whatnot. So it's, that's a new problem but we still have a fundamental issue of people with the younger group as our primary target, which I think goes to the biggest bang for your buck and people moving here and contributing to the economy. But we do have a hand kick down the road now that's gonna, gonna be an issue. Okay, any other, any other comments? Oh, sorry, Larry, did you, do you wanna? follow up at all. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm just curious as to how you react to this. Well, I, yeah, I, well, maybe I would ask Caroline, what, what would be the drawback to our trying, uh, with all due respect to Todd, trying a survey that gives us a better handle now, especially since we've already um, uh, funded about 75 uh, new slots. It seems seems to me that it's appropriate for us to at least uh quickly make a, a uh, an attempt to to define what what the demand is out there but yeah, what, I mean, what, 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 do, what does that do to you carol i i mean that's fine if we can do a quick turnaround so our we're hoping three eight but we might not know about the loan until the week after so 
if in the next couple of weeks we do something like that, that's totally fine That'd by be, me. That's pretty and quick. Then Tom uh, from the Vermont Standard was planning on doing an article. So that would probably get more people to fill out a survey. So we could put something in that article to say, hey, fill out the survey, let us know. We need to know what the demand is for all of these groups. So aftercare, six weeks to three, like we, we don't want to start something if people aren't going to come. And we don't want you guys to spend money on it if people aren't going to come. We want to start something so people come and we are um, contributing to the community. That's what we want to do. Not, oh, you know, just John, want to not have people come. I, I'm wondering, you must, the body of business plan must have been trying to determine the demand level. Well, yeah, we have a wait list of 37 before people. Before you even started this whole process. Yeah, right? we have a, well, we know we need it. And then we okay. have a wait list of 37 people and we haven't even promoted it. I've posted it on one mom what, what, parents group saying hey we're planning on starting this here's our website built form if you're interested so we haven't done anything on listserv or anything the promise we don't know right the promise we don't know the duplication yeah right. what we're worried so about is, is the duplication so yeah. excuse me uh, michael green if you can i don't know if you have a camera you can come on but michael green has a question or has raised his hand as a comment i'm not sure michael did you <laughs> raise your hand He's on mute. Yes, he had. He said he had a question. All right. Yeah. No, I'm trying to figure out how to. Uh, uh -huh. I try to take off myself off camera and said I pulled up a bunch of fun effects that I could have had. Um, <laughs> no, and <laughs> I, I just want to. I just want to thank the Olsons for what they're doing here and and you know throwing their hat in the ring. Um, you know they're a respectful business here in town, and this <laughs> isn't like this is this is stepping up to serve the community at a time when the community needs it, not. Uh, anything other than that and, and super appreciative of that you know as far as like conducting another survey sure send another survey out and you know uh, all of us parents with kids under the age of three will mop it right up and we'll fill out your survey and tell you that we all need coverage again um, you know it seems like it's a pretty well known thing at this point and, and I, I guess the other the piece that I'd, I'd add and, and ask Carolyn about is just like looking forward and, and like dream of of you know what that facility could be I, I live next to the east end uh, park here so i'm right next door to where this future facility could be maybe the closest family uh that's to it mm -hmm. and you know just want to hear about like the opportunity of having the park in the backyard and everything else uh the grand vision that y you have going forward uh because i think it's not only an opportunity for you all to, to like have stepped up to serve the community but also create like a really amazing space for us all. So, um, yeah, um, we're planning to utilize the park and utilize the fields. We have something in the works that I want to talk about in too much detail yet, but we're probably, fingers crossed, um, we'll be able to do something maybe in that field for a cool like outdoor nature-based play area for the children. And then we would make it open to everybody on the weekends too. So it'll be a nice, cool little hangout spot for everybody going forward, assuming that goes through, but that's kind of all I can say about it at this point. But thank, thanks, Mike. We know we know it's super needed in the community. And then there's, there's something else that we've been talking about and it keeps coming to my mind while we're talking about this, is that it's such a game of like trying to put one kid in a spot at the right time because this kid maybe is coming when they're six weeks and they're gonna be with you for a few years. So how do you fit in all those other people? So. It's definitely a game of like we we would need to interact with every child care provider because I'm sure they're in the same boat where they're like, I need a six week old, but I I I don't have a six week old. Do you have but one? So sharing the list in that capacity with other providers because it's really a balancing act on getting the right kids at the right ages and making sure they move out. It's it's kind of mind boggling when you see the list and you have the birth dates there and exactly the age you have another hint that's yeah that's really interesting um yeah. jeffrey i'm going to come to you in a second but i just to follow up directly on this point todd was there ever any discussion about this has nothing to do with funding but it does have to do with making sure that our funding is as effective as it can be was there ever a discussion about creating a a a, 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 a body who could execute that kind of information sharing it doesn't even have to create a body just you know have the five six provide yeah, so have the six providers agree to share that information when they when they needed to once a quarter or something like that was there any discussion of that uh it's early on we tried to get our heads around something similar to that but i tell you i've been 
I've been working on, you know, a Woodstock Cares app. I mentioned you a while ago, and it's it's my programmer had a immediate family death, so it set us back a few months. But I hope to personally be able to provide a portal where people can go and have long lasting and meaningful discussion and metrics for Woodstock that would be free to everybody. So I'm working on that personally, but no, they're, they're getting people to talk lists or any of that. It was always a real struggle. And now we know there's a legal thing behind it. So it's unfortunately not. Okay. I, I have an idea. On yeah. that. So it doesn't have to be, it could be as simple as like a Google spreadsheet. It doesn't say people's right. names. It says, Hey, I have four kids this age, or right. this is what my list looks like age wise. Right. Exactly. And here's who I need. I need somebody that's this age. Can you ask that person? If they need a spot. Exactly. That information is legal, yeah. I believe, is legal. I mean, yeah. you can't restrict that. It's just a, you know. Sure. Just okay. Um, Jeffrey, yeah. Jeffrey. And yeah. Then I a quick question. Um, I heard earlier, I, I, it sounds like a, a wonderful plan, uh, but I heard earlier that 79% uh, of, of the families involved were Woodstock, leaving 21% not Woodstock. You're talking about 17 potential children, I think. Is there, so, is there is there a way to prioritize Woodstock yeah, uh, families uh, that, in there? I just didn't hear that. Just to yeah, no, question. definitely. I was just saying that of the people that filled out our list, uh, who said where they worked and where they lived, seventy nine percent of the people that told us that information live in Woodstock. Seventy nine percent of twenty eight people of, 20. of the thirty seven who were on. Yeah. The yep. Twenty four people. So theoretically, we have we could fill the whole school with Woodstock kids because we have 17 Woodstock people on the list. All right, that was my question. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any other questions? All right, um, so there's a couple of proposals we could make. I, I think if we act very quickly, and Larry, I know you said that two weeks is really quick, but I, I don't see any reason why we can't try to do a survey. I mean, Michael Green, is that's his name? You know, maybe if we can get actually some help from the you know the list the um discussion forums that have the parents and so forth on it and mm -hmm. I, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be able to do a survey in in two or maybe three weeks i mean i think it you know we meet again in four weeks mm -hmm. um is uh it, so, it seems to me that that trying to do that is 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 possible sorry carolyn you're gonna yeah i was gonna say our our only whenever we we just want to start the construction as soon as we can right um and we question. will probably know in two weeks if we can start it so that's why i was suggesting two weeks but yeah what, whatever well, we could we we could put a contingency on it but but um getting vermont standard involved is a great idea too because it it makes it clear like hey we have a grant in front of the, the EDC. We need this information now, you know, and and get it's it out. Kind of, yeah, I think so. It does with the people who read the standard, which are a lot of people. But not, we saw in our survey, the uptick was like ten people after they ran it, which we needed those ten people. They were important. Yeah, but I'm not saying it's the only place. I'm just saying, you know, you. you oh no, I'm saying like yeah. that article will get ten more. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But it's still good. <laughs> I, I just to just to piggyback, I, I support the survey for the, the timeliness of it. Um, so if we can get a serve, I would I would be very happy if we can get a survey out quickly and know that we have the data um, hell or high water ready to go for our next meeting. And we can take this up for final consideration then. And also before then, we'll know how the uh, loan fund sh shook out for Carolyn. So if, if it doesn't break Carolyn's dreams to give us the four weeks and we know we can be definitive yeah. then I think that yeah. that sounds good to me personally okay. if that can works we, for everyone else Carolyn. could we have a could we have a, a not a vote but an inf I mean I'm just sort of judging from body language and the nature of the questions and the lack of some questions that I think people seem generally supportive of this if the survey to me, I, I want to do the survey. I'm, I feel it's our obligation to quest to, to, to try to assess in quickly uh, demand. I also agree, though, with Todd that the survey, both because of the number of respondents and because it's very, it's, it's not an easy, 
It's not an easy question to answer in a survey. The only way to answer it is to look at the list, which we can't do. <laughs> and, John, couldn't we just simply ask the question, how many wait lists are you on? We could, but we, but, but we could. That would give us an idea of demand and how many places they're across. Right, exactly. It would. It, it's just, it's going to be a, it, yeah, it, it would. We won't know it's the number of people leaving. Place. We won't know the number of people coming in. We won't know exactly how much more capacity we want to create. You know, is it if we if there is demand for seventy five and we create eighty two, I don't think that's going to tank the whole world. In fact, given the complexity of matching, yeah. you can't you, you can't get it to be one hundred percent. You need extra supply, otherwise you can't. Kids still won't be able to go. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, so anyway, my point is, it, it, the survey isn't going to give us a black and white answer. But I still think we should do it. So I still think that what Todd was suggesting, if you can, and we'll go as fast as we can, but I think that to give us the four weeks, I think that's reasonable. So all right, the last comment before we, then we will not take a vote, but I, I just did want to get an indication, assuming that the survey doesn't conclusively show that there's not demand, how would people feel? Are people generally supportive of this? I'm just trying to give Carolyn a sense so that she can talk to VCLF and you know, it's sort of, we all have to sort of, it takes a community. Todd, you're okay with that? If you don't, who else is, who else is okay? I mean, I'm, I'm okay with it actually. Yeah. Joe, how do you feel? I'm fine. I Larry, you're, you're, are you commenting or saying you're okay? You're okay. Is there anyone who's not really comfortable with it? Okay. So I think we want to do it. We'll do, Larry and I will, we'll do, a, we'll do a survey. We'll, we'll, we may reach out to you and Michael Green and others to sort of get people to respond okay. um, and we'll do it as quickly as we can, but and definitely by the next meeting and absent a, this isn't, a, this isn't a motion, what I'm saying, mm -hmm. but I think the sense of the group is absent a clear indication that there's not demand. Yeah. yeah. Then I think we would make this grant. Okay. And I think we would, the way I would propose, well, we'll discuss it, but what I will propose if we get to that point is a third at six, a third at 12 and a third at 17. Yeah, that makes sense. Which, by the way, means that you've gotten your exec. Larry, that also handles our condition yeah. of getting an executive director and getting a license, yeah. since you won't get people without this. Thing. Yeah. So we can just keep it at that. Perfect. Okay. Any other last comments? I think this is. Michael Green had one. Okay. Sorry, Mike. Michael. Sorry. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, as long as Carolyn's okay with this, uh, I think that the, it sounds like a great plan, and you know, I don't have much say of anybody else other than the public, but. You know, the one thing that I would add from a parent who has been on these lists before, you don't really know where you sit on those lists, right? So you could be 34 plus a year out on one and 20 on the other and 75 on the third. Like, so even though the EDC has done a great job of creating and helping the providers open up more spaces from where the parents sit, I don't think we have any more certainty looking forward um, than we did maybe four months ago. Um, you still sit where you sit on these lists and it's a very, very hard process from where the parents are to understand, you know, what's the availability. Um, so it's almost not to like challenge the idea of another survey. It's just like, I don't know that we could share much more information beyond what we, we already have. Um, but I'll, I'll stop and just say thank you all. And, and hopefully uh, we don't have to keep Corey up and out late uh, for the next meeting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's asleep. He's a, he's a trooper. Mike. Mike, Mike was on a list for you guys didn't get into a spot until their child was a year and a half. Yeah. So you guys yeah, yeah. And my wife and I both work full time jobs. And yeah, it's it's brutal. We we shared um, with uh, <laughs> with the Olsons uh, coverage in the past and I uh, can't say enough great things about who they've picked for their executive director. Great. One more. You got one more question, John, from Greta. Okay, uh, Greta Calabrese. Greta, go ahead. Hi, folks. I'm just I just wanted to chime in. I'm also a parent of two kids. And when we moved back to Vermont about a, a year ago, we had our kids put on lists of the existing child care centers. And luckily, we, we have coverage at the moment, but I wouldn't say that um, ideally what what the middle school is going to provide as, you know, kind of a Montessori inspired education and a lot of outdoor time. 
and everything that they are looking to provide to the community isn't going to be drastically different from the other options out there. So I would say, you know, knowing which children or which families have their children on duplicate lists is important, but I would say that um, I just don't ever see this, the middle school not being a priority for a lot of families. It just sounds like what they want to provide for children is going to be really, really um, amazing. So I, I would just like to speak in support of that. We're happy with our childcare at the moment, but that doesn't mean I, I wouldn't strive for kind of the best that there is. So, um, but again, we're very happy. All right, thank you very much. And I think this goes to Todd's point about the, the you know, th that's, why, that's why I'm saying that I don't think we should look for proof that there is demand. I think we should look for proof that there isn't demand. And if, unless we find that, I think we should approve, we should make the error, if it is an error of, of, of having extra, having more capacity. So, okay, all right, thank you very much, Carol. Thanks thank for the job. And then we'll thank be in you. touch. Beautiful we'll be job. Touch. Okay. Yeah, great, good night. Okay, um, our next, uh, go back to uh, the agenda. So our next item on the agenda is the revised funding proposal from the marketing working group. Um, and I'm gonna put that up. Wow. I'm really good. I'm in the middle of a Zoom meeting. So Jeff, can you, okay, I'll mute Jeff. Can I FaceTime you back? That's right, I got him, yeah. <laughs> Okay, Michael, we see your comment. Thank you. I will reach out. Michael, you send me your email, me and Larry, me and Larry Niles, your email, your email address. My my email address is on the list serve all the time. Jonathan.spector at gmail.com. Um, I'm just getting the, uh, the the marketing proposal on. Um, sorry, give me a second. I have it on my phone. Yeah, no, I have it here. Okay. Um, I, I just want to explain um, why we're talking, Joe asked me at the beginning, why are we talking about this? I think many of us, uh, some of us anyway, th thought that what we discussed last time was, was postpone, it was funding the marketing budget for three months. For three Proving months. Proving it for three months. Proving it for three months, which by the way, the select board has proved approving it for three months to give us three months to do the marketing work plan, <laughs> the surveys and so forth. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about that work plan after this. Um, uh, Patrick uh, was unclear, was unclear about that. Uh, didn't thought that, that, that um, we might, that that wasn't exactly what we had agreed to, but in any event, after further discussions and thinking about what he would actually do, it fails that it, it's operationally very difficult to execute what we agreed, what I think we agreed to, uh, and and therefore he's coming. He was in on discussion. Yeah, I understand. And, and we asked him, you know, fine. Yeah. We actually asked in the meeting, can we execute this? He said yes. But yeah. fair enough. This is complicated. I, I mean, you know, nobody. I don't. I don't hold it. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's thought this about is, this. Is very different than a lot of like our goal. Yeah, so anyway, so the reason, I'm not trying to make his presentation, Patrick, I think you'll start off with this, but I just wanted to say that the reason we're talking about this tonight is because, um, is because of that, is because that's what's transpired. You mean, you mean the complexity, if you would, the complexity of it would reveal and possibly uh, we had to take a second look at it. Correct, that what you're exactly. Okay. That's why we're talking about what we were, what, what many of us thought or what I, what, what's at least several that. of us thought. You can write that down what I just said. It <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll give you permission to use it. Patrick, <laughs> Patrick, go ahead. Okay. So, <laughs> that, that, to, sorry. Joe took over the comedian job from John. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I should be Colbert's uh, I'm writer. I'm but, slightly but, pissed about that, but that's <laughs> Patrick, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, the reason that, that we need to talk about this is because unlike a lot of our, our typical uh, grants uh, where we can have uh, different spots, you know, like what we're talking about with Caroline with, you know, third, a third, a third, uh, the marketing needs to happen on a monthly basis. And to do that, we need to contract with people, you know, for an annual contract, you know, just like we do with origins and so forth. So the, the issue I have is I need to be able to uh, lock in 
class four to do this contract for a year. Uh, it's very difficult for companies like that, that, you know, to do a program for three months and then it ends. So, uh, you know, we need to, so what I did was- Wait, 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 wait. Let him finish and then you can ask. Him. But it sounds to me like- Joe, let me finish, please. Let, 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 just let okay, finish. Let You'll let be the first finish. question. You're raising your- All right. Uh, so what we what I, we did is we went back uh, and we basically scaled back the program significantly uh, to to the hundred thousand dollar budget. And for me to, even though you gave me thirty thousand dollars, I can't spend thirty thousand dollars in the first three months. I need to make this money last for a year, uh, and I need to lock in. Uh, class four for a year because they need to plan their resources to you know continue to run the program. Uh, so that's why I'm coming back to you now to look to get this approved for an annual contract so that I can go back you know and and lock this in place so that we can start making the changes to scale it back and to keep the program running. Although it'll, it'll be you know we won't be generating quite as much leads and so forth as we did before because of the way we have to scale it back, which I sent everybody an email on, on exactly what we're doing. Uh, so that's why I'm back for this. So we've significantly reduced the class four budget. Uh, and, you know, we got, we got everything to the, to the nine, basically 998 or 99, 90, 80, under hundred. Uh, but I you know, would really like to be able to lock this in and and let class four know that we're moving forward so that I can you know get a contract signed with them. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast of how marketing companies work. Uh, you know we're, we're doing this we're not doing this as a project, you know month a month kind of thing. this is this is an annual kind of uh, approach. So uh, you know you can see what we've done. Uh, we've We've consolidated the other thing too to keep in mind is that we've consolidated all of the previous marketing, not just the program that we developed, but all of the other marketing uh, aspects that we had that were separate grants in previous years, all into this one grant. Uh, so if anybody has any questions, uh, you know, fire away. Okay. All right. So hold on, Joe, then Greta, then Susie, then Deborah. But it sounds like to me that we agreed on how we could move forward on this and class four said no deal. That's no, what it sounds like. Not at me. all. They, no. they shut they shut it down, right? No, not at all, Joe. This is that's what it sounds it, like. That's not how it sounds like. That what I'm telling you is they didn't shut it down. They haven't said anything. I haven't, uh, you know, they I worked with them to develop a budget that's going to work for an annual contract. Uh, they haven't said yes or no to anything at this point. Uh, they've worked with us to get the number down as far as we could. Uh, so no, that 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 there's been no no comment from anybody about whether uh, they will do it or not. I just so then when you know, say they would do it, then Joe, do you understand? You need to understand that these types of contracts are normally done on an annual basis they're not done on a monthly basis so for us to keep working the program and doing what it does you know we need to look at this on an annual basis that's what makes this different from our other grants this is a, a service that that continually runs uh you, you know to to market woodstock so I think what, joe, what joe is asking is has have they refused to do it even though it's typically done on an annual basis have they refused to do it on a three-month basis? Yes, I've not had that. Is that your question? That, that, that's part okay. of it. The other, and the other, and the other part of it is, is um, um, the annual hundred thousand dollar expenditure was thought to be something that should be considered, whether we need it or not. Well, I'm not. I'm, I'm tired. I'm not wording this correctly, but. Uh, that's why we decided as a group to fund it for three months so that we can get an accurate feel for what not only seems to be needed, but what the community wants. And um, 
and that's what the decision was based on. Let's get some more information and let people know what we're doing, what we're doing with get a feedback from them. I don't know how to respond to that. Uh, okay. the, the, wow. Because uh, I have not spoken to class four about whether they would do this or not if we are only funding three months. Uh, I'm going from my experience of having done these types of contracts for 40 years and knowing how marketing companies work since I ran one for 40 years. So that's the reason I'm, I'm coming at this, that this we do, this is an annual contract. Uh, you know, I don't know whether they will want to do it if we say we've only approved three months. Haven't asked the question yet. I didn't really want to ask the question uh, at this point because I think it's, uh, I think it's fair to understand how these typical these companies typically work. Now, uh, in terms of what the you know, and, and I I know John's put a survey together uh, or a proposal for that, and I am all in for that, but. My feeling is that whatever we come up with for that, uh, which I think it's going to take longer than everyone thinks, that we should plan that for 2024, where we can put a real, you know, plan based on what people say. Uh, and also, I think we need to need to understand, you know, what kind of information we can get out of there, because it's not just about marketing; it's about how people feel about Woodstock, who come here, as well as how the how the citizens feel. So. <clears throat> I'm just looking to get the program running for this year based on the idea that, you know, typically these types of contracts are annual. Uh, if, if we don't do that, I don't know what the answer is going to be. Uh, I would have to go back to class four and ask, uh, but I'm giving you, you know, my experience at this. I think Patrick, and maybe this might be easier for you. If the last meeting, what was decided was, um, we have a difference of opinion. We should get a, we should get a I don't feel. agree with what John said. I don't. I don't remember hearing that. that okay. What we that, did that decide kind of was what we should get a feel for is how people feel about their experience coming to Woodstock yeah. before we decide how much more we should spend on marketing. And the question is whether or not we. Yeah. Whether that was it. Right. What, we haven't done that. What yet. we're discussing tonight is really the question of the word before. It, one of the things we're discussing tonight not, is whether or not we should do it before. Some of us, including me yeah, and, you, and you and a few others, think that that's exactly what we decided. I went back and looked at the video. I, I believe that that's what we decided, but it's not 100 percent clear. So in, in any event, yeah. let's just let, let's keep going with the with the. Oh, oh OK. Um, as someone who is. Um... No, sorry, Greta, Susie, hold on one second. It's Greta. Greta oh. would have her hand first. Greta, Susie, Deborah, Roger and Michael. Thank you. Right or lower hand. I, oh, I, put, I put my hand back down. That was a mistake. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. All right, Susie, go ahead. So just a little bit of perspective. I am in the industry now and, and agencies would happily take a three month contract with the hopes that it would last until something longer. Don't know when the last time you were in the industry, um, Patrick, but you know. Uh, since, I, since, since, since I just retired my last client, less than a year ago. I've been in the industry for a very long time and I do well, these I'm in the industry the currently time. and I'm just saying that this is the way And I can tell you, I can tell you this Susie any of the companies any of the okay, agencies I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to argue an I don't want to contract I, I don't want to argue this for a year already with right, with Patrick, for Patrick, so Patrick, Patrick, Patrick hold on one second let let okay you have two different perspectives on this issue let Susie finish Yeah yeah we do Let's just go through these people and you'll have a chance to Okay so one of the issues that I quite discovered um um, just by talking to people, um, was that it's not very clear to me that all the merchants are on board with this marketing program. And I say that because um, Roger and I were in an establishment and the owner came up to me and said, I'm so glad you spoke out against this thing. I don't want any more customers. And so I said, hmm, I can't say who it was because I didn't ask her, can I quote you or whatever. So I went to Soulfully Good Cafe today and I talked to Nicole. Um, Nicole just sold her cafe. She's uh, the new owner is in. She's off getting married um, and she's traveling, getting married, all this other kind of stuff. But she said that she will try to find the time to write a letter to the EDC. But she is very, very much uh, opposed to um, this because she said, 
it was pretty interesting. Jill was in this conversation as well. She said that, you know, when you get a lot of people, you know, you get, you get like, I don't know, maybe 50 people who stay in your hotel. She gets, people come to Woodstock for eight hours. They get hungry. They get to, they want to have a drink. They want to sit down. They need to use the facilities. They, people come to her and she can't handle the demand. And she said it causes a lot of stress. I know that there were times when she was at my house in tears because people were waiting online for a long time. And um, and then she run, runs out of food. They don't have a lot of options by the time the people get there and they get angry with her. And so she just, you know, she just so and, you know, whether or not you agree with that or whatever, I just think that you really need to survey um, the merchants because it doesn't seem to me that everybody is on board with that, that it, you know, that this kind of um, driving traffic benefits everybody. Um, and then um, I really think that we need to, I've been emailing back and forth with John uh, uh, about this, but I really do think we need to ask some serious questions about what is our capacity. I asked Nicole, you know, how many meals she, you know, in a day where she's got full staff, they're working nonstop, what is the maximum number of meals that she can put out? And she told me 300 is their high, is their high number. So like when you get to LaSalle and you've got 5,000 people, I mean, I would be curious to know Joe Di Natale's, um, you know, how much Montvert. I, I, I guess my Very point is, is, I guess my point is, is that when we have a lot of tourists come in, the workhorses, the people who have to really work to serve those people, the people who are on the front lines of that tourism are the food establishments. And I've talked to two so far, and they are opposed to bringing in more people. I mean, really opposed to it. And so I just think, let's not rush into this. Let's see how everybody feels. And, and um, ask, I would like to ask this question of Joe. Joe, what is your feeling? What is Sam's feeling on this? I'd be glad to share with you. All right, but let, let, you know, <laughs> let me just go in order. That's okay. I don't want to let you each start falling on each other. So, all right, Susie, thank you. Deborah, Roger, and Michael, and then Joe, uh, and Deborah, Roger, and Michael, and then Todd. So. Thank you. I'm I'm glad we're taking um, the time to talk. Uh, it's a hard, you know, it's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of issues here, um, and I, for one, I I felt like what we said in the last meeting was. You know, we had anticipated getting a budget for a hundred, and it's not what came back to us. And so we said we're going to fund you for a couple of months and give us what that budget would look like. So I I thought that's what we were talking about. In addition to um, actually doing this um, uh, survey, which is incredibly important. Um, I have two questions for you, Patrick. Um, just as far as, as this is a budget, so how does the money need to come to you? As like like we were talking about the child care, how do you anticipate the money needing monthly. to come to be given? M monthly for most of it, except for origins, which that's a we have to pay them for the for the year up. So it's equal equally split, except for the yes. seventy two. Yep. Okay. And actually, the contingency okay. the contingency will be used only when necessary. Okay. And th the other point that I just want to make is people have budgets, like like we're all saying. People either you know hire somebody for a couple months, hire somebody for a year, and they have a budget, and then they decide what it is that they want to do with that budget. Um, it felt as though uh, collectively prior to last meeting that we felt like okay, a hundred thousand feels like the right level to spend. And the question then becomes how, what do we do, what do we do with it? And what, what do we, um, you know, like take this thing that they've, we've spent all this money building and point it to, I think both of those things can handle, be, uh, happen simultaneously. And it really comes down to us as a whole deciding on a budget. And I think that, and that becomes like, that's what, you know, towns have budgets for marketing. What is it and where does it go? All right, Roger, then Michael, then Todd. Hi, um, I understand Patrick's 
um, problem with, with the way this has been set up. It's very hard to take a program like this and split it into increments. But with all respect, and I know a lot of work has gone into this, I have serious questions about whether this is the right program to be undertaking at all, and whether or not $100,000, which is 30% of the EDC's budget every year is an appropriate spend for marketing in a town where there are questions about what kind of marketing we should do. Um, I don't think going out and deciding to spend $100,000 now to continue a program of this nature is, is a good investment. Um, you know, as I've said to Jonathan a million times before, and probably everybody else, there are some basic fundamentals to your marketing infrastructure that are not in place. And the main one, the, the most significant is not having a website that is flexible and gives a true understanding of the town as both a place to visit and a place to live. That's what you should be tackling first. That's a lot cheaper than $100,000 a year. Um, I think it would make a lot of sense to have a content person, whether that's for fifteen dollars or $20,000 a year, who is responsible for creating SEO-optimized content for both social media and the website. But this is a lot of money. I, I'm categorically opposed to spending $100,000 a year, no matter how carefully or or judiciously that $100,000 has been, has been set up. This is way too big a budget when there are so many questions about Woodstock marketing and where the fundamentals of Woodstock's marketing are severely handicapped. Thanks. All right, Michael, Todd, and then Marion. Um, yeah, you know, to be honest, Honest, I was really shocked to see that this was on our agenda today and, and a little bit disappointed because I, I left the last meeting saying, thinking, and, and my understanding was that, yeah, this is a bigger conversation that we need to have. Is this a marketing plan that we actually need? Do we want this? I mean, I mean, this is the same conversation that we had last time. And, and I don't want to waste Patrick's time. I don't want to waste our time. And, and I feel like we left that conversation saying, we're going to work on this over the next few months and come up with a, a solution, yay or nay. And, you know, I just hate to waste more time on this. I, I'm sorry, that's that's my take on it. All right, thank you, Michael. So I, I really just don't know why are we here doing this again. All right, I, uh, Todd and then Marion. And then me. And, oh, Joe, okay, and then Joe. Todd, Marion, Joe. And then I'm gonna say something if there isn't enough. Yeah, um, I mean, look, we talk about stuff all the time in the meetings that maybe we should or shouldn't or go on or so I, I know it's this and this is a long meeting tonight too but it's all important stuff I get it I'm with you Mike but I think um counterpoint to the business at hand I don't anybody can bring anything as far as I'm concerned at least Patrick you brought us this thing that's at 100 grand which we talked about but but unfortunately it wasn't last meeting and at the last meeting we did talk about funding the gap so we can get some more data. So I can tell you, I, I read this. I know we tried to touch base today and didn't happen, but I I am in full support of maintaining and making sure that we can gather the most efficient information possible from visitors that do come. I do see um, Susie's point and others about maybe people don't want more visitors, which is what the data might get into as that takes a, a bit to calculate and, 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 and gather or, or it might not. I'm, I'm very interested in that survey. Um, but, but for me, just to try to simplify this, cause I'm rambling, like I always do. I apologize. I think we need marketing. I don't want the web. I think the website sucks. We don't want to break what you already built. It probably is too big in my opinion, but I'm not an expert on it for this town and their needs today. But thank you for presenting it in a hundred thousand dollar envelope. So to, to your point, Mike, at least we're seeing what we could expect to see 
later and know that Patrick found a way that it's possible, right? So I think that's that's good to know and be informed. Um, but I still have a lot of questions overall on should we need to spend this much and why? But but I don't claim to know anything about it. So it's like it's like I might as well be a, in a retirement home. I don't I don't understand what you're doing. I just want to make sure that if people come that come anyway, we can maximize our data gathering for when it is slow and when we need to reach out to those folks. Um, we have the best foot forward. Marion, Joe, and then Jeffrey. Susie, I will, I'm going to call on you after everyone has had a chance to talk once. So um, where are we up to? Marion, Joe, and then me. Sorry, Marion, Joe, Jeffrey, and then me, and then possibly Susie on the second round. Okay, Marion. So I, I have a question um, for you, Patrick. Um, I think one of the, the powerful things about this strategy is that we are collecting access like we're collecting an audience that we can speak to in a variety of ways and that's um how you presented this plan and i think that's really the smart value of it so one of the things i'm not as clear as i thought i was about is if we want to do things like uh joe has has asked for several times like surveying um past visitors to ask you know what their experience was like through using these tools or to say um you know reach out in in a very specific way say okay we we need a certain visitors at a certain time when demand is is you know when we need that support or you know sort of that all those things you talked about how we could sort of use this audience that we're building in a flexible and strategic way to support the community but um what I'm not clear about is, are those all additional costs? Because when we asked about like doing the survey or some of these other things, it sounded like, well, we haven't been able to do them and we would have to do that on top of this. So is this full budget only for the collection of emails or can we, can we, if we, if we spend this hundred K in this year, can we do any of those things now or is this all just collecting the, the audience so that we can do that in the future i guess that's is that question clear yeah yeah no i understand uh basically co collecting names is one ah. one piece of what this can do uh there's lots of many lots of things that we can do we can send surveys out you know we can we can help local merchants do marketing through the platform we can we can do many many things because we have access and we have a you know I, I used the 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 analogy before we've built the foundation now we can add windows and doors and and kitchens and and so forth onto this to do different functions because we have this tool that lets us speak to uh people who who come and show interest in Woodstock uh, so there's a lot of things that we can do, and many of them with very minimal extra costs, really just to write emails or or create surveys or that type of thing. Uh, there are some functions that would, if we wanted to add, might cost a little bit more money, but we have the we have the you know the foundation in place to be able to do many things. I, when I pitched this, you know, way back when, uh, you know, I was looking at this as a as a you know one year, three year, five year kind of plan where we can, you know, increase what it can do and how it can help the community and help businesses uh, promote themselves. Uh, you know, so I was kind of leveraging this off of my ten years of doing the American Express Co-op program and, and helping that blended with with doing the Northeast destination marketing for them uh, as well. So uh, I was looking at this as put the platform in place. You know, get the basic functioning running. Start to collect uh, our our database of names, uh, and continue to build that so that we can talk to people at any time. Uh, we can promote businesses. We can promote events. We can we can really you know promote lots of different things and do lots of stuff once we have the engine in place. The engine is now in place, uh, and we also have digital assets as well. Uh, that we're not going to do much with this year, but which we will, we've been using the photography side of it. We haven't done much with the, with the video just yet, but uh, you know, so basically I, I built the engine and yes, many things can be done. Some things may cost a little additional uh, money, but most things we can do with what we have. Thank you. Uh, Joe, Jeffrey, Susie, and then me. Joe. Um, I 
I think one of the primary or, or the primary questions in the last meeting was, I think we lost track of that. It was a question I've been asking repeatedly, and I'm sorry to be redundant, but it seems as though it fits into this conversation again. Gathering information about the response or response from people who come here as visitors and 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 asking about their experience while they were here mm -hmm. and what we can do to improve. I mean, if anything, this supports marketing. That question supports marketing rather than trying to diminish it. What can we do better to make their experience a better experience here? And until we know that, I mean, this is the first time we've tried anything at this level. From the best of my knowledge, the only things humankind ever got right the first time they tried it was sex and beer. And, you know, well, well it didn't work for me anyway. But we, we really don't know how to best serve the people who do come here now until we ask them. And, and, and judge, wait a minute, I'm not finished yet. No, I'm judging not, I'm from, with you. I'm not, I'm not cutting you off, I'm disagreeing with you. <laughs> okay, fine. So judging from the last conversation I was involved with at Beth's office with you and John, I mean, I brought up examples of, you know what? There are businesses in town, and I think it's supported by what Ju Susie just said, that really don't want to do any more business than we're, than we're doing right now, than they're doing right now. I mean, if the butcher shop wanted to do more business, he would open up on Sunday and Monday. If Dr. Coburn's want to do more business, they would open up at 11 o'clock instead of 12 or 12.30, the way they do it. Pizza Chef wouldn't close on a Saturday night, and it's not, it's not a staffing issue. They want them one night off for the staff. It could be a Tuesday or it could be a Wednesday, not a Saturday night. I mean, they, you know, Woodstock Farmers Market, long before all these initiatives started, they closed on Monday. They used to close on Tuesdays. Then they changed it to Mondays. I mean, and there's a guy who does $100,000 a day sometimes. So, you know, I think getting a sense of the feeling of the community is important. Getting a sense of the visitors who come here and their experience here is important. I really don't think we have a real good sense of all of that. We got a sense of what marketing does for General Motors and these other places, but not for Woodstock yet. And when we do, I think we can work on that information. And we haven't, we haven't reached that point yet. And, that's, and I thought from the result of our last meeting, we we're gonna give ourselves some time to get a sense of that and then work with that information to make it better. And apparently that's not happening because we can't do it on a three month budget. We have to do it either take it or leave it for a year from what I've been saying. Uh, uh, Jeffrey, Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey and then Susie. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> this is a tough one. Um, I, I'm in a business on Central Street where I'm talking to these tourists every single day. I work six days a week. Um, a survey, it's, it's very predictable what a survey from them is going to say. Food service, they love Woodstock. They lo uh, and the biggest problem is food service. And it doesn't, Surprise me that uh, soulfully good or Moan Vert would say we don't want more because That's there's only that. two cafes in town and I didn't say that. I, I didn't say you said that. We said Mont Vert. That's me. Well, I, I said there are only two cafes in town, and that they get when we are very busy, they are they are overloaded. Oh yeah. That's true. However, um, they're not the only businesses in town, and the program that's been building to cut it off now to me makes no sense at all um it, it would be like we kind of may have wasted the money that's been spent the um and doing a survey fine go ahead and do it um but i think you'll find that it's food service and we know and we know the problems there hopefully there that will be alleviated by more a food service opening there are plans for more to open in woodstock that will help that but um, 
I don't think it makes any sense to cut off the what's been built so far, and and it's a big mistake for the the majority of the businesses in Woodstock, which six months out of the year do not see the crowds that you that uh, we are really talking about, because really from January till June, except for certain Saturdays, it's not that busy in, in Woodstock. And then it is busy for six months. And to keep that healthy and to keep the businesses healthy, all the businesses, this program uh, has been effective. And um, I, th I think it should continue. Anyway, that's my thoughts on it. Um, John, I'll be very, very quick. I forgot to mention this the last time. The, the answer is actually really pretty simple, and that is the merchants pay for it themselves. I mean, I think I've heard that there's like 35 merchants. Divide that, you know, that 100 grand. You're talking about $3,000 a merchant or so, they get to take, you know, 25% of that off their taxes. It's not that unaffordable for them to do this. I think that the, uh, for them to pay for it out of their own pockets, Patrick's made the claim that the last year's, you know, building the infrastructure, doing all this stuff, it resulted in $5.1 million. Well, that's terrific ROI. Anybody who has a business, I have a business, I spend more than $3,000 a year um, marketing. I just don't think it's unreasonable for them to pay for this themselves. The EDC paid for the proof of concept. You guys are happy with the, 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 the deliverables? You're happy with the, the results? Great. Go out and spend it. There's no reason why the EDC has to pay for it. And there's no reason if you so well believe in this, you know, sidestep these conversations. Just fund it yourself. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Um, so I, I'm going to, you got one more hand up. Uh, I'm oh, sorry. Roger. Oh, Roger. Okay. Roger, go ahead. Um, I already spoke. So yeah, I mean, just, I just, so make a brief the point. bottom line is, are you going to spend every year going forward a hundred thousand plus, and it's going to go up every year on marketing. I think that's a bad investment, especially when you have not, managed your fundamental marketing infrastructure like your web website and gotten it to the place where it's actually adding value thanks yeah that's a good lead into to the to my comment i think that so here's so my thinking has evolved a little bit in, in listening to tonight's discussion um i i feel like this is an issue of that the issue that we're faced with right now in March of 2023 is, is a very short-term issue. Two very short-term issues. One extremely short-term. Wait a minute. We said we were going to do three months, which most of us believe is what we said. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, it is what we said. Uh, uh, why are we doing it tonight? I, I think that it's fair to say that between that and... Uh, Patrick, the sequence of steps that you, you know, the proposals that you made, we've sort of mismanaged this. <laughs> Collectively, we've mismanaged this budgeting, this marketing budget process. You know, we said, we, if, this had, if we had gotten a $100,000 proposal a little month ago, we would have just approved it and it would all be done. So anyway, it's all water under the bridge and nobody's taking it personally. But so there was that issue. I think we'd sort of set that aside. I think, th I think this is a short-term issue about what should we do for marketing in 2023? And, and what I don't, what I want to make sure we do not do is, is come to the end of 2023 and find that the only option we have is to market the way we have been doing it, continuing the program, spending another hundred or 150,000 on and so forth, and, 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 or shutting everything down and having nothing as an alternative. Because I think what we, what, what I think the marketing team hasn't recognized yet is that well sorry I th because i think we have fundamental questions about first of all whether or not the purpose of marketing is to get whether or not we want to have more people here and i've heard from both patrick and jeff now i heard from patrick before how could anyone not want to have more people here yet we have people saying that i think we have to recognize that by the way i don't think it's rational either uh, if it were me, I, I mean, my organizations that I ran used to, you know, I'd say, you know, they said we had a great year. I said, I know, but we're going to grow, you know, and I, that's, I'm totally on board with that. But I think we have to recognize the physical fact, not everyone is on board with growth, period, full stop. And our marketing program 
does not recognize that, period, full stop. And we that's have to true, ask- John. John, that's not a true statement. It's not a true statement because the program can ramp up or down as it needs to. The whole idea of building and the Patrick, program- Patrick, 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 John, let also, everyone- yeah, John, right. let everyone yeah, speak. Just, just let him- I will speak after that. No, 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 that. Okay, I'm, I'm, Patrick is jumping in because I'm over whatever the word is. I, okay. We, we basically, we, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm overstating the case and there's no need to That's overstate the, the case. We, we have, uh, we, we do not have clarity about three things, about what we want. Do we want growth or not? Um, and, even, and even to some extent, who, who do we want? Although I think we have maybe more, not, not complete agreement, but some agreement about that. We don't have agreement about what are the most important ways to market. We used to market one way. I think most people who looked at the way we used to market think it wasn't a very good way to market. We've now built a particular way to market. It's doing what it's supposed to do, but there are other things that we're doing badly that might be more important. So how do we market? How much should we spend on that marketing? And who should pay for it? Those are all valid questions that we haven't really fully answered. And then third, we all agree that there are that even if we want to grow and even if the way we're marketing is the right way, operationally, we need to do some things to improve. I mean, people, we have to, people shouldn't be peeing in the parking lots. Right. And we don't know what to do about that. By the way, we can, solve, we can work on that problem. It's not an unsolvable problem. So these are three really, really important parts of all of this is our marketing. How do we, pe how do we get people to park and eat food and not pee outside? Who should pay for the marketing? What type of marketing tax should we use? And is, do we want to do a lot of marketing or do we want to not have, what's the purpose of marketing? Do we want to upgrade the people who come here, whatever that means, make them more diverse, make them richer? Who knows? We don't, we, we don't, we've built a particular, we don't know the, we don't really know the answers to those questions. Now, here's the problem. Last month, I thought we could answer those questions in two months. Three. In three months, yeah, we can't. And Patrick is right about this. He's right about that. Well, what? We can't answer those questions in, in three, three months. months. <laughs> you know, that's not unreasonable. Right. That's <laughs> if but we're if we're, to be answered, though, John. Uh, right. And so we're going to about to go on the next the next topic to summarize the work plan and the work plan gets at many, not all of those questions. It gets at the surveys and so forth. It's very explicit. We'll talk about it. Okay. Even doing that was going to be a race to get it done in two months. And I, by the way, I know one of my flaws. I'm really good at developing these plans. I'm not really good at delivering them on time. <laughs> and Patrick is <laughs> right. We know that. Patrick is right about giving, about, about the, 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 the things are going to take longer than we think. So I think the question we have is, you know, should we say we're going to take 2023 and we've built a Ferrari or an SUV or whatever you want to call the thing we've built, <laughs> right? We would, I don't want to bias it. We built a car that goes a certain speed on down a certain kind of road. It has certain characteristics. Do we want to we don't have an alternative right now. We can stop driving the car. Or we can keep driving the car, but we don't have another alternative right now. We'd have to build a different approach to marketing, rebuild the website, decide whether, you know, what we want to spend our money on, on more bathrooms and more food service instead of more marketing, whatever. At least it's collecting names. It, it is very effective. The car is very effective at doing what we asked it to do. This is one so so my, my view is, is that what, what we should do is approve the budget that to be perfectly honest, we would have approved if we had done this in the right order. We were all on board with it. And now we're kind of pissed off because we haven't answered all these questions. And Patrick is coming back, in my opinion, with something that I, I think we didn't quite agree to because he's kind of stuck. He doesn't know what else he's supposed to do. He's got the car. That's the only thing he has. He, you know, and, and, he, and he and many people think and he's not the only one on this call that thinks that marketing is important. I mean, we all admit marketing. I think important. it's important. Exactly. We all do. I so, Given all of that, my suggestion is that we approve a budget, a full year budget of one hundred thousand dollars, with with two conditions. Okay. The, the most important condition is that, and this is going to not be easy, but we have to do it. 
is to position ourselves by the by December 31st that we can shut down the car if we decide that a different approach to marketing is needed and that we get all of the assets. We basically, I mean, obviously we own them. That that basically we can either run the platform ourselves at a much, much lower cost with an internal person, or that we basically we've basically, if you know, if, if there's no way to do that, then we've just decided we have to decide whether we want to throw the platform out or or keep running it. And that we position ourselves that we've got nine months to basically get that ready. We have to train whatever people we have. We have to make databases accessible, whatever it takes to do, that we're in a position so that on, on December 31st, when we've done the parallel work of figuring all these questions out, and I'm going to show you the work plan for the first couple of months of that, but we're going to have to do more than that, that we then have the ability in September and October, November to, you know, to, um, to, to, to figure out what plan we want. And that plan, I see Susie just made a comment about merchants. That plan, the, the questions we have to ask include who should pay for it. I think I think Susie's question is a great question. If it's worth $5.1 million and there's 35 merchants, you know, that's $150,000 each. Who wouldn't pay $3,000 for that? Unless it's not worth $150,000 each. So and I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to solve it tonight. What I'm saying is that who pays for it is I think a question that absolutely should be on, or who pays for part of it, whatever, should be on the table. So I think, what you say, Rosano, I think what you're saying is the questions that were raised at the last uh, meeting were valid. We just didn't give ourselves enough time to answer. Correct. And, there, and I, think, I think to really do it right, to, to address all of the marketing questions that have been raised, we can't, we can't, we can't change the three months to four months. And we can't do this to Patrick. I mean, it's not to Patrick, to, to the marketing plan. We need, let's take the nine months. Let's approve what we would have approved anyway. Let's look at the marketing work plan that I'm about to present. I think we're going to agree to it. It'll, it'll deal with I mean, some of the questions. You're getting more people on the committee. Yeah, absolutely. We, we're talk, we've already talked about, we've already started to recruit some people. We'll talk about that in a, in a couple of minutes. But anyway, we start with that work plan, but we expand it to include these three broad buckets. What do we want? What do the community want? What do the visitors want? What do the merchants want? What are the marketing tactics we can use? Do we need to do the website? Who should pay for them and so forth? And what's the physical infrastructure that we need to, given, given what people want? Find that what, physical infrastructure. I, the people have, the, those communities need to tell us what they think is important. But my guess is food, bathrooms, and parking. Okay. Right. That's my guess. But we're going to hear what they have to say. So this is a, I can't read it. It says that. excellent plan. So, so, so I would, so, so, I'm going to make a motion. We we don't we can vote it down quickly, or we can do it. But I'm going to make a motion to approve a budget of one hundred thousand dollars, with the condition that we are in a position to ex to either operate the platform ourselves at very low cost, or or to um, extract the assets, the content, the data, you know, the the names and the. Who, who have you recruited? You said you you're recruiting people to expand that committee. Who's that? No, no, well, let's come to that in a minute. Oh, you haven't, you haven't yeah, decided that. Okay. You, you so, have a few hands raised there, just so you yeah. know. Yeah, I, I, okay. have, I have a, yeah, can we make some comments on that before you yeah, do Yeah, no, no, correct. I'm just going to make a motion and then. But I want to just adjust the motion I, slightly. No, no, okay. that, hold on. The way we do is we make a motion. I'm hoping someone will second it and then we have discussion. Okay. And so so I, I'm going to make the motion that we approve a budget of $100,000, including the 327. So it's an extra 67, 800. No, 37,2, it's an extra 62,800 for a full year of 100,000 with the condition that we are positioned to either run it ourselves or extract the, the data for it so that we can use that in some other marketing techniques. And that in parallel, you know, so that's my proposal. Is there a second for that proposal? I so second, second it doesn't mean further discussion. Right. All right. There you go. So, Thank all right. You. So now is there a discussion? So, um, so t Todd, Todd started, Deborah, yeah. Roger, and Jill. So we've dug ourselves in a hole because let's face it, last year we thought we had something and we didn't have to keep paying for it. That's not the case. The hole could be full of gold, could be the could be full of childcare slots, could be full of lots of things. I'm not against that we dug the hole. I'm for allocating this money this year. I was for it before yeah. the budget's been reduced. But in the further deliberations about what, where, when, why, who, you know, there is no right answer here. As we all know, it's a complicated issue. And, and I hear Susie's points. I like it, but it's not going to be that 
straightforward. This this meeting is not straightforward. The issues aren't straightforward. Some merchants may not see the same uptick as others, and some may be barely struggling to hang on. Others may be filthy rich. You know, I can't can't all say just that even three thousand. But the spirit of it, I think, is is great. The spirit of the discussion is great. What I'd like to see. I mean, honestly, saying that to get someone to go and we can run it ourselves, we're not doing that. You know, it's not, it's no. not going to happen. So let's just face the fact, okay? But I think that the assets we already own them. That throw that out, like that's great. We already own them, so that's meaningless to me. What I'd like to see is a fork, like in programming. We're going to fork it out, okay? I'd like to see. We give you the hundred thousand, great. You're going to do what you got to do to make the thing great. You've done a great job with your team, Patrick. The town's grateful. It may be too much. It may be too little. It may be too left. Maybe too right. Who knows? But what I'd like to see is further discussions. And I'd be happy to be part of this group just to listen and riff. But I don't know this business. I'd like to see community involvement on what it will look like next year, what it should feel like next year, what our priorities should be like next year and merge, morph that community involvement into the processes that we're paying for with the 100,000 this year to, I wouldn't use the word winding it down, but potentially pivot to something different. So that, that I'd like to see a, an, an avatar, not the second movie was terrible, the first one. I see an avatar approach of we all get together and connect and we really got to focus because it's worth our time to do everyone's we're, we spent five hours in the last two meetings on this thing it's worth our time but i'm i'm hesitant to just put john your blocks in there because it's just they're not going to work out that way and we'll just be arguing more but i am in favor of this dough and a path forward that has community involvement and perhaps a couple side meetings dedicated uh to this position and its output well, Patrick, I, I mean, uh, Todd, I think that the process that I will will lay out is is what you said, not different from what you said. So, but anyway, we'll come to that in a minute. Uh, Ro uh, Deborah, Roger, Jim. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's uh, it's basically what Todd said, except that what what I'm hearing is the two uh, the two caveats that you gave doesn't include working with them to cr to create from what we find out. Like Roger said in the in the note, uh, in the um, chat box, it's we're trying to figure out what we need and how much is our threshold to spend. And I think in order we need we're going to need um, the people who built this. It's not about about taking it away from them. It's about adjusting it according to what we need and how much we want to spend. And that's what we're going for. And ideally. We get to keep the same people who built the thing, if it's possible to do, because they put a lot of hard work into it. And does it still work for what we find out that we need? If it does, great. Tell us how we could do it for whatever it is that is our threshold of money that we want to spend in the future. And I, I, I thought that was assumed, but I agree with you, everything that you said. So yes, that's I'm, my, I can I will modify my proposal to make that explicit. But yes. Uh, Roger and then Jill. Um, so I hate to disagree with John because I think he's one of the smartest, got one of the smartest business heads around, but I think he's oh, falling sorry. into a classic sunk cost fallacy. I don't think it's been demonstrated besides on a, on a PowerPoint presentation that there's sufficient ROI from what we're doing even if we do want to do it, and that's a whole other question. Obviously, I think we need a marketing budget. I don't think that you're going to sink 100K into it this year and then decide, oh, we're going to walk away from that next year. There's no way you're taking the technology that built and running it with, with that volunteer assets in Woodstock. That's not happening. It, it can't happen. You've decided on a very sophisticated and, again, I, this very well done marketing marketing structure, which I think is very arguably not the right marketing structure. I think it's going to be, if you can't walk away from it this year or, or dial it down this year, then how are you going to do it next year when you've already sunk a quarter of a million into it? So I think you need to stop 
You own these assets to the extent that they're usable extensively without the agency involved, great. Have conversations about how to do marketing. Nobody's gonna stop coming to Woodstock tomorrow because the EDC hasn't got a marketing program up and running. There's a website that you're funding. As poor as I think it is, it's still there. There's social media. Fund a social media, fund a, contact, a content person for $20,000 a year, put this program on hold and have a conversation that takes all of the, the questions about how should Woodstock be marketing itself and what is the truly cost-effective way to do it. Because if you decide on this $100,000 now, you are deciding every year going forward that you're spending more than $100,000 on this kind of program. And I don't think you've come, I don't think that it's been justified that you continue to do so. Thanks. Joe, and then uh, Patrick. Oh, Jill, you're muted. I want to support elements of the previous three speakers. Um, I appear to be coming institutional memory very quickly. We cannot do this ourselves. You cannot do programs like this with volunteers. We've tried it. They didn't work. You have to pay professionals. The question is, how much do you pay professionals and what do you have them do? I don't think it's a good idea to continue as we are for another year. I would suggest that we continue the, the um, budget we have for three months, which most people would accept. It's already set up. They're not talking about uh, firing any people, changing any asset allocation right now. And then you guys give yourself three months to sort out what we need to do so Patrick has a very clear path forward because he spent so much time on this and it's just not fair to keep discussing it. We have to have a plan. We don't have a plan we all agree on. Let's get there and let's get there fast. Um, uh, Patrick and then Marianne. I've done a very poor job at explaining what this is and what it can do for Woodstock and how it's uh, very expandable and, and can basically be our, our marketing hub. So I've done clearly done a very bad job at that. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm not quite sure how to, how to do a better job at it. Uh, but we can do so much with this, the things that Joe wants to do with, with sending out surveys, there's, there's, we can build a co-op type program where businesses can participate in it and they can pay money to be in it. We can find ways to to uh, maybe not have people pay completely for it, but where we can defer a lot of the costs. There's lots of things that can be done, you know, and, and I think we have to throw the website to, to the side because I think the website's a separate issue. And I agree totally that the website needs to be looked at. It's, it's old uh, and the content, we've been fixing the content as we go. Uh, and we do, we have paid for a content person who has helped do that as well as the social media. So, you know, I think fund this for the next year. I will come back with ways that we can make this self-fund itself to maybe not 100%, but you know, to, a, to a decent degree. Uh, and I'm totally, totally on board with, with what you're going to hear next from John, uh, that the, the information to find out this information, I think it's critical. I just don't think that... Uh, we can do it as fast as, as John thinks we can do it. And so I think we should do what John's gonna propose next uh, and plan for 2024 to exactly what we need to do. And it'll give us all the time we need to plan for that, to hit the road running on January 1, because we never do that. We never hit deadlines. You know, We're always saying we're gonna do this and all of a sudden it's February, March, and we haven't started yet. So I, I think we need the time and I think we need to do uh, run this and, and let's, let's ask questions of me of what this can do and how it can help us and what, you know, where it can, it can solve some of the problems that we have. The, the marketing efforts that I've seen in the 10 years that I've been here, uh, you know, have not been good. Uh, which is why, you know, I got on the EDC to try to help with the marketing. So, I, you know, I, I understand what people are saying uh, and, and their concerns, and, and I don't disagree with, with them. Uh, there's ways to do this, but, you know, we need to, we need to think about it and we need to understand 
this platform that we've built can do a lot of everything that people are asking. Marion. Um, yeah, I think we should also remember if we, for those that are advocating for, for ending the budget that Patrick also wrapped in all the other things that we were doing before into this. So there's still a significant cost, even if we, you know, because he's integrated the social media person, he's integrated a, a bunch of the expenses that we had in the past into this. Like we, if we just stop paying this, we're still going to have to pay for those, I think. And like, Are we? It, it's, more, it's well, I mean, if we want to keep we doing that, we want to keep blogging. I, I mean, pay a blogger. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. If we want to keep the website. So yeah. 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 yeah, he put so he took a bunch of things that were external that were separate expenses and he's rolled those into and in many cases the agency in order to reduce the costs said that they would take those on at no additional cost just to contain all of this so i think it, it's just important for us to remember if we decide that we wanted to stop it today there's a bunch of other things that we would be stopping at the same time yeah all right thank you joe well you know you know what i think i mean all this discussion to me has been very helpful because i, I think what i've learned here is that we should have been asking these questions before we started it. And since we didn't, now we have this issue that a lot of us don't really understand and a lot of us don't really agree with. But I think it's fixable. I firmly believe that. And I really believe in marketing and it's important. I just don't think that what we are doing is the right approach and the right way to do it. So I would agree with giving us some time and to do it right this time. I mean, we obviously could have done a better job at it in the beginning in terms of deciding what would be the right way for Woodstock. But we can fix that. I think we can fix that. And I think we should fix that because it is important. And um, maybe this future plan will, will address that. We can get it done right this time. OK. All right, so I so let me we're technically in discussion about a motion. So let me modify the motion because I take the point that that we won't be able to run this platform ourselves. I think that's very fair. Um, so I think that I, I what I would do then is make a simple motion, and I don't, and I will describe the parallel effort to that motion to make it explicit. I don't think we. I mean, I suppose I could make a motion that that it's a funding motion and a work plan motion. <laughs> Right. Okay. So I will propose, I will make a motion that we uh, allocate a for the full year, taking into account the 37-2, the full year of a $100,000 budget for calendar 2023 for the, to be used as, as the marketing committee has laid out and as they see fit. And there are a couple of, I think, issues within the marketing committee that I'll let you guys work out and so forth. I think we've always done that in the past, um, but consistent with the total budget that Patrick has presented. In parallel with that, I think we're making a commitment, and I don't think we can do it in three months. With due respect to Jill, I know we want to do it quickly, but I don't. That's, that's, in the same way that we can't, volunteers can't run the platform, we can't answer these questions in three months. Um, I, I think we, there are three broad questions that the work plan needs to answer. The work plan that I'm going to show you answers one of them and par partially answers a second. So there's more. So the work plan I'm about to show you after we, if we pass this motion is, is, is a good start, but it's not complete. But the three things I think we need to discuss in the remainder of the year is what do we want? And the we is three constituents, the community, visitors, and the merchants. How, what's the best way to market to them? How much should we be spending and who should pay for it? That's all the how do we do it? And I think that we have to understand, I disagree with Roger's point with as much respect as he showed me with all the comments. <laughs> Roger, no, you're the smartest person. <laughs> that I disagree. We are not deciding to spend $100,000 every year by deciding to spend it this year. And I want to be very clear about this. Despite the fact that, Patrick, you have belief that this marketing hub, that you have done a bad job of explaining it to us, I, I think a better way to say is that we don't all completely understand it. I, I have some understanding of it. I think that there is some possibility that we will throw out this marketing hub and take a different approach that will be better to market for Woodstock. I'm not saying we'll do that. I'm not even saying that it's likely to do that. But it's very, very clear that we that 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 I at least will not support in any way. I will not be subject to the sunk cost syndrome that Roger talked about. If this turns out to be a sunk cost, then it's a sunk cost. 
and we will do what is the best way to market. What we will not do is, is say, what is the best we can do with the platform we built? I will be vehemently opposed to that. If the platform that we've built is the best way for us to market what we need, fantastic. And Patrick is confident that it is. I'm less confident only because I don't know what it can do. You have to show us. That. We're going to have to figure out. Well, and there, and this is to Deborah's uh, to, to Deborah's point. I think it was we have to work very closely with the marketing team and the team that built this platform, so they can tell us what it can do and they can propose how it can help us to do the marketing that we decide we need to do. But our objective at the end of this year is not going to be how to use the marketing platform to do what we want. It's going to be what's the best way to market to do what we want. And if the marketing platform is that way, fantastic. And if it's not, we're going to throw it out and we're going to start again and we're going to do something else. And so that, that, that's not part of the motion. I'm just saying that that's the, that's the work plan that we have. We have to make that decision. Do we want this hub? Do we want this marketing hub to continue? And that's part one of the questions that the work plan is going to have to answer. And we need and we need nine months to do that, not three months. So my proposal is to fund $100,000 for the full year and to commit to the work plan and to start discussion of the work plan in as soon as we're done voting on this motion, <laughs> if we approve it. So is there a second for that? I think that reflects. Again, no, it is second. I taught us. No, no, I'm, I'm revising the motion. There's no conditions on it. Taught us second. Is there any further discussion? Susie, your hand is up, but could I could, could yeah. I convince you to put it down? <laughs> sure, sure. sure. All right. you, you said it. All right. So then the, seeing no further discussion. So to all in favor of that particular motion, please say aye. I'm going to vote for that. Aye. All right. Okay. Uh, is uh, I, I'm I'm seeing people one two three, okay thank you Larry and Michael can you come on just so I can see it's easier to count one two three four five six seven eight Michael Michael is okay so so seven are in favor Michael is opposed are there any there's no abstaining all right so the motion passes seven to one okay so we have our work cut out for us and if I can just go to the next agenda item let me just share with you this partial work plan that did not anticipate some of the fullness of this but I think does go a long way towards getting us started and my suggestion is in the interest of time that we not try to improve the plan tonight we just understand that it needs to be expanded and that I just want to share with you what it is and so you're all um oh shoot I don't have it here hold on hold on it's here <laughs> John, will you please watch it? Oh, this is your baby, John. Yeah. I, I, I can send it to you, John. No, you... No, I've got it here. No, oh, sorry, I'm not sharing it. Hold, hold on, let me just share it. Yeah, give me a second. Okay, this may be a little hard for you guys to read here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be hard if you were standing right in front of the screen. There, I'm just going to show. I'm going to show you. Um, the, the, there are there are uh, six sections. We've done section A, which is to revise the, the, that should say 2023, revise the 2023 marketing plan to hit an annual budget of 100K. So the six, the five other sections, assess the views of the local community. How satisfied are they with the current level of tourism? What do they believe what the impact would be if we had fewer people, if we had more? What trade-offs are people willing to make if you, and so forth? Basically, try to understand what the local community is. And that would, the work there would be a, a public meeting and a survey. Maybe it's two public meetings, maybe it's a sub survey, but the, basically now that we have a little bit more time, it basically doing what we've said, asking the community their views about what we want, not about how to market, but about what they want. The second major element of the, and there would be a team that's going to work. I think, the, I think the appropriate question for that is how do they feel about the tourist rate yeah. and the, the, the effect on the community? Exactly. That's the, that's the thrust of it. Yeah, and Marion has agreed to lead a sub team of that. And we'll work on putting together a couple of other people, a, a, a merchant and, and et cetera. There's one other and so forth. Ignore I the names. Okay, well, we'll, we'll talk, let's, let's do the operational stuff in between the meetings. Okay. If that's all right, just because right. it's so late. Right. The second major stream of work is assessing the experience of visitors. And here, I think there are three sources of information, at least. Again, we can modify this, expand it. One of them is tapping into existing lodging owners surveys because many of them have existing surveys. The second is to do a survey of visitors using the platform. Okay, well, and maybe another- that would be, In my opinion, that would be a, a, a great job for the chamber. Uh, we can talk about who-, who Yeah, who yeah, 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 There's a third- We need multiple sources for that. So I think yeah. there's a lot of sources there. 
but there, and there's a third tactic, which is really interesting, which is uh, online sentiment analysis for the tourism industry. Hmm. There are 720 million comments on TripAdvisor. <laughs> and there are now companies that will analyze those, figure out which ones pertain to Woodstock, read them, determine if they're positive or negative, that's the sentiment, and determine what area they are positive or negative about. Food, restrooms, lodging, outdoor activities, skiing, <laughs> whatever. The parking <laughs> lots, the state of the parking lots. How much do they cost? I want to see some, the some, of, some of them are quite inexpensive. Some of them are for Flower baskets. Yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. Trash cans. Yeah. Okay. So, so assessing the views of the local community is the first stream. Assessing the views, experiences of visitors is the second stream. Susie, your comments in the emails that we exchanged led me to add a third stream in parallel, which is assessing the priorities of the local merchants. And I think Jeff has, you know, Jeff um, has art and Patrick are both merchants in that sense have articulated it. Joe has articulated a different view. Susie has commented. Let's figure out what the merchants and obviously the chamber has to be closely involved. Beth, I see you're staying yes. late here to do this. Um, the chamber obviously has to be, you know, sent, Beth, you, maybe you lead that, at, you know, or you just do it. If It's up to you how, what role you want the chamber to play. If you want to do the whole thing, that's fine. But basically we need to understand, we need to understand whether the merchants are united, if they're divided, why are they divided and how, and, and maybe, you know, how can we meet the needs of different types of merchants if those needs are different. The, the next stream gets at the infrastructure piece. Uh, in parallel with understanding the needs of those three communities, I, I don't think we have to wait to hear from them to start to brainstorm about some problems. We know that restrooms are a problem. It's also not an unsolvable problem. We know that food is a problem. That's also not an unsolvable problem. That's right. We know that parking is a problem. That is a problem. That's, that's harder to imagine solving. But I, I will tell you that I think there are solutions to that as well that are not actually very expensive. So. But anyway, in any event, that's just my opinion. Let's start working on those things so that by the end, and then I think the, the stream that's missing here is how, what's the best way to market? Is this marketing hub the car that we want to drive, the, infra, the marketing infrastructure that we want to drive? What about, the, what are the other parts? And let's get some marketing folks to have that debate. Not, not a debate where what we're threatening is the budget for marketing, but a debate where we say, look, for starting in 2024, what do we want to do? We want to keep driving I, the marketing hub and, and have it do the things, or do we want to take some? I don't think program? you can answer that question until six months from now. I agree. That's why we're going to take nine months. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, you, the, I agree. That's going to be the end. The last question. Okay, what have we got? What have we learned? And where do we go with this? What's the best tool? What What's the best tool? Marketing Your infrastructure. Tools. Right. Exactly. What are the best? What What? Yeah. Do exactly. So So I think that's roughly what the work plan needs to look like. Let's just talk at a very high level, not about who should be on it and so forth. I, I, at a very high level, if we add that stream of what tool do we want to use, what platform, what marketing approaches, what strategies, all of those things combined. And we need a team, I think, of marketing people there to, to, to help brainstorm with that. Um, and on that piece in particular, we want the current team that's built the marketing hub to be constantly saying, this is what the hub can do. You know, the default, I, I, when I, when I say we have to be prepared to turn that, to, to shut the hub down, the default is the hub. I, we don't want to shut it down. I'm, you know, if the hub can do what we want, fantastic. We're, you know, but if the hub, so, so are people comfortable with this scope of the work plan and their comments about this? Deborah, I see you're raising your hand. I'm going to, well, I'm raising my hand that I'm, I'm a marketer and I'd like to help out. Okay. I'd like well, to be on it. Let me just suggest that we not do the volunteering tonight just because it's late. And I will tomorrow uh, send out, if we understand what the scope of this is, I'll ask all of you which things you'd like to work on, including people in the community if you're on still and so forth. Are people, but in general, are people comfortable with the scope of this plan plus yes. the one stream of that? Um, well, I'll, I'll say how I feel about it. I mean, it, it, it's, to me, it just, it feels more comfortable than when we first talked about marketing a year ago, because this, this has questions that are valid and the answers that we get from those questions are going to make this job so much better and, and, and better for the community overall, for the merchants, for the, the local people and the visitors. 
So yeah, I think this is the way to go. I, um, I'm going to second that. I think that the, this marketing plan, I call it an advertising plan because it's an advertising plan, the one that, you know, um, you know, it, it, I feel like it's had a, a bunch of fundamental problems with it from the initial assumptions made. And I think that um, this plan will answer those questions. I think that a lot of people have questions. You know, the merchants are not a monolithic block. They, you know, and um, there's all different ways of marketing. And sometimes it doesn't make sense to just continue advertising when other forms of marketing will drive specific uh, demand where it's needed. And so I think that this frees us from the assumptions that we've just been shoehorned into. Uh, so I'm really supportive of this and I will be on the marketing committee. All right. I, I, and I know, I, sorry. I think we said, have to accept the fact that it's gonna take a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's just not going to be one of those things where we spend 10 minutes every three weeks. It's going to take a lot of work, and people will get committed to this. Have to accept that, and that they're, they're going to be responsible to get some of this stuff it's done. It's a major effort. Good I think comment, Joe. Good effort. comment. Yeah. Good comment, Joe. Are there? Is there any other comments about the scope or the general scope of the plan? Because if not, what I plan to do is to pick someone from the EDC in each of these areas. And have some people start to build out a team of people that will work on this and so forth. And I've got Marion and so forth. I'm, I'm, I want to, anyway, we, we'll, so I'll reach out and, and involve people from outside the, you know, outside the EDC as well. Yeah, so, merchant or two would be good. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So yeah. I think we have one more item on the agenda. Oh. Well, sorry, we have two more items on the agenda. Oh, and I think Deborah. God. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so tired of my kids hate me. I'm yeah, just me too. late, man. I'm exhausted. All right. We're, uh, yeah, I'm sorry about this, but we do have one more issue, the timely issue, and then we will, I think, once again, Deborah, postpone the, the discussion about um, about the the grantee review process. Is it? It, does it make sense to um, send that to yes, everybody? Yes, absolutely. We'll do definitely yeah. do it offline, and no question. I vote yes. So well, <laughs> what's next? All right. So I, I let me just. I just want to position this. Uh, I, I, um, that Deborah is is about to present a proposal, and I'm going to share it on the screen as, as you um, instruct me, Deborah, to to move through the slides. A proposal. Um, okay. But, but I'm just going to okay. say that Deborah is coming forward with a grant request for events. My only comment is to remember that in. October-ish. And Michael, is Michael, are you still on? I, I don't have my participants list no, in front of me. Michael is here. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, my, in, in, in October, when Michael and Deborah came to us and said, I say October, September, October, sometime around then, and said, you know, the events working group. Um, it, it doesn't have anything to do. Well, it's, people aren't proposing things yeah. to us. But also, it doesn't really fit into an annual January, let's decide for the full year which was sort of a theoretical comment about the nature of events. That's now not theoretical. Something has happened where Deborah has had an opportunity that wasn't present at the January meeting. And so hence, the, hence why she's coming now to us. And it's sort of, you know, you can either say it's outside of the process or you can say it proves the point that Deborah and Michael were making about the nature of events. Okay. So Deborah, go ahead. Um, can I show it from my screen? Oh, yes, or... absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think, I think it... you need to let me. Yeah, I will. Hold on one second. Okay. Right. Susie has her hand up. Susie, do you, did you mean to have your hand up? I think she just didn't take it down. Okay. Just wanted to confirm just in case she had a question. Okay, Deborah, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I know it's late, so we'll, we'll move as quickly as we can through this, but it's, it's exciting. So here we go. So we did um, here. Yep. Yes. So we did the inaugural event in on September of 2024, uh, 2022, um, and it went very well. Um, the The topic was what is community, and we got great ratings from TED. And they've come forward and they've um, given us an opportunity to do something in April. We've been looking for a way to promote TED and involve the community more 
and have them understand greater what, what TED can do and what it is. And by the way, we just announced our um, theme. We just let our videos out into the world and I'm getting inundated with um, uh, speaker um, submissions from the area, from all around Vermont and New England, which is super exciting. So uh, people are excited to hear. Now, I'm just gonna show you, this is a minute long, but just in case there are people who don't understand or you know have experience with TED, I want, I wanna show you a one minute video, which is shown at the beginning of every TED so that you understand what it is. So here you go. Welcome. So I went to them and I said, okay, I'm, I'm ready to do my next year's um, TEDx. And we had a great conversation and right now I'm tying I the a knot, losing your health coverage, oh. or welcoming someone new. Hello. When life changes, <laughs> covered Bubba. California. Don't want that. Um, there we go. Sorry about that. And so this is this is uh, the topic for this coming year: the art of living. So last year was what is community? What? How are we going to get through this together? And now the topic is: okay, we got through this. What am I doing? Why am I walking the planet? What makes a worthwhile life? So it's a broad topic, it's a good topic. People are excited about it and they were. Um, so the submissions are open and um, we have a great advisory team aboard this year. We're starting much earlier, which is super exciting as well. But, and that there's a possibility that we can grow this so that we can be in a larger venue. We can, you know, maybe be at town hall and we can potentially get TEDx Woodstock. They basically let us know, like, look, we just need to see you continue what you did. And, and what you did, uh, according to them, was, was great. And they were very excited about it. So what, they allow, what they're asking or what they're talking to me about is doing a TEDx Heartland Hill Live. So TED, the main event, happens in April, which is a five-day event. And it's a, this is the main TED event. The main stage this year is in Vancouver. It's five days. It costs $5,000 or, or more to go to this event. And, and then after a while, they produce the videos and they show them online. What they've done is they've given me a license to show it live, to stream it live. Um, and I looked at the dates and I looked at, uh, at how this works and I realized this is a great way to get people to understand what TED is. So we have a, um, you know, we're talking with Billings. We have the date, and we're talking about how that may work. Um, and it, what that is, April twentieth is their closing night um, sessions. So it's going to be their best speakers, right? It's right before their main party. So it will be live. It will be at, you know, at Billings in a, in a, in a in the theater, there'll be dinner. It's a way, A, to raise funds for us, but also for people to really get what we're attached to and how broad it goes out and what the potential is to have it here in our community. So it's it's low impact as far as I don't, it's not as big a production as what we did last year. So it's easier to produce. Um, it's much more about the marketing elements uh, that need to get done quickly. But beyond that, there this is, um, a, a, a tangible thing to do to bring to the community. And it's not something that people are gonna see. They can't get online and just watch this live. They, um, that doesn't exist. This is the budget for it. Um, this includes aspects that will um, be set up for next year's, for, for 2023, for the Big TED, uh, our Big TEDx in September. So there's elements that I'm producing here that I get to produce early for this that allow me to take it, moving it forward um, into uh, next into the next thing. So what I would do for the grant would be, I would, yes, it would be presented by the EDC for in April, but you would also, we'd also have you as a main sponsor for the TEDx um, in September, because elements of what I'm doing here um, are going to be are what I'm, I'm hand, you know, are handled early. So that's it. Deborah, can you put up the budget page again? Yeah. Just to be, so I just want to make sure 
I understand. We understand you were asking basically for a grant of fifteen thousand dollars to cover three quarters of the cost of the event. Yes, but it's but that and, and the and that will help to that will also help to pay for Ted in September. Yeah, there's about about ten of that are items that will then be moved forward into um, reused a second time, reused and have it done early for the September twenty third event. How much does the September 23rd event could cost? The uh, September 23rd event is coming in uh, this year about 120 instead of the 90 that we had. Um, be, yeah. And so how is this going to help that? The $10,000 that I'm talking about coming from here that will move forward, I'm producing some things for the stage. And the marketing materials um, that I'm getting ready now will be moving forward. Can you, can you tell us what you might anticipate your request for a grant will be in September? I wasn't going to request a grant in September. I'm okay. saying that this grant would allow me to produce in April. But part of what it does is it produces for April and for September at the same time. So EDC would be uh, a sponsor of, or a presenting sponsor for the April event, but would be uh, one of the sponsors for the September event as well. So it's all encompassing. No, nothing. It's, she's saying that the, for this $15,000, yeah. we get this, we get to be, it's an effect like we're giving 15 to this and 10 to that. Because the tent is physical stuff. She's like she's spending. Uh, correct me if I'm yeah, wrong, Deborah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, she's designing a marketing thing. She has to pay eight hundred dollars for that. She can use that again. All right. So, right. So, and so. and just so we're clear on the hospitality, hospitality isn't you know overnight and things like that. That has to do with um, food and other items because we're not able to um, how it's set up. You ha they have to eat there for dinner. I I have to feed people. So it's it has to be part of the whole thing. What is the rev? What's the revenue from this? Um, you know, I'm thinking it's gonna. You know, if I do a fifty dollar ticket or a fifty five, you know, um, so what is that? It could be as much as five thousand, or you know, somewhere in there. But some of that may have to, you know, ideally. You know, if we get another sponsor, that'd be great. But otherwise, I'm hoping to cover the costs. And if possible, you know, we have uh, we've earned extra money to, you know, move us forward and more towards the September event. Um, that's kind of how it lays out. So if anybody knows sponsors or potential sponsors for Deborah, let her know. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be a great one. Roger, good question. Um, yeah, I just want to say that I am, as a grumpy curmudgeon, I am yes. definitely not the sweet spot for, for TEDx, but mm -hmm. I think this is super on brand for Woodstock, and I think it's a, it's a very minimal investment for a lot of kind of prestige, so I, I would support definitely putting, putting this money into that kind of investment. Thank you. It, it also is, uh, you know, I was going to do all these um, uh, additional salons this year. And once I got a group of advisors together, we really sat down and said, you know what, put all your energy towards September. And then this came along because, because doing salons it involves speakers and et cetera, et cetera. And when Ted gave me this license, I was like, this makes sense because you really get to see what the whole thing is about without us having to actually produce, you know, this spectacular stage. We just get, you know, a window into it and provide an atmosphere for people to have a discussion about Ted and maybe get some additional people to either sponsor or submit themselves as a speaker. All of those things are possible. I just want to make sure everyone, there's, there's not any confusion because I, it's easy to get confused. There's only one TED. It's five days a year. It's, it's a five, it's a one week period. It's in one place. There's 3000 TEDx's, but this is the TED. And so we're being able to, this is a big deal. Yeah. To be able to watch this live. Mm -hmm. This is not a, you know, this, and is, this is the one that's happening in April. This is the one that's happening in April. Yeah. How many licenses? It's, a, it's obviously a huge honor that we got 
the license and it's proof of the work that Deborah's doing. Do you know how many licenses they oh, give Deborah? I'm sure there's hundreds or thousands. So I, I don't know, this but I know the that we're deal in April. What's the what's the real deal? What is the deal in September? TEDx. Deborah TEDx. Building we're... towards TEDx Woodstock. I see. Yes. Right now they won't give us the name of Woodstock because we haven't proven ourselves. I got it. And Woodstock, they said, is too valuable a name, which, yeah. by the way, suggests the opportunity for us to get TEDx Woodstock. I think it was, <laughs> you know what I mean? It'll attract, yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to attract people. We get the parking lots ready. We're going to have lots of people. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. and, and keep in yes, mind, uh, I don't Deborah didn't touch she won't tout can herself. We, can we vote on this? Yeah. Yeah, what? Sorry, Patrick? What did you say, Patrick? Patrick, last comment and then Todd is making yeah, I just, a, just make Deborah, a motion in a minute. Deborah won't won't tout herself, but she got a score of 94 from Ted on her very first TEDx. We're blown away. Yeah. Okay. All right, Todd. Motion to approve fifteen thousand dollar grant estate. I second that. Okay. All right. Are there, is there any further discussion? No. Michael, can I just ask you a quick question? Because you were silent, but you have for a very long time been talking about the importance of getting people to do things and events and so forth. And so are you supportive of this? I'm more than just your vote. Do you, how, how do you feel about absolutely. this? Okay. Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. No, absolutely. I think it's great. I think the first one I went to personally, I thought it was a success. And I think this is just a bonus. And I'd love to see it as a TEDx Woodstock. Me too. Um, so if we could get that nomenclature, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All in favor. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. You come Aye. on, EDC members. One, Aye. two, three, four. Deborah can't vote. So five, six, seven. Okay. Deborah has re is recused for this. Is there any opposed? There are no opposed, no abstains. Okay. So the motion passes. Okay. Um, we have to take this to the select board, but um, and for the marketing thing as well. But I'll get that as soon as possible. Um, okay, I think that's for now. That's all that. Joe, is there a second? Joe and Marion got this first. All right, all in favor? Aye. Any Aye. Opposed? Thanks. No. Thanks. All right, thanks, folks. Good work. Good work, everyone. Yeah. Yes, great okay. job, everybody. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye.